Baseball on Spectrum Sportsnet LA brought to you by El Pollo Loco. Dodgers and Phillies, couple of first place teams ready to play game two of this series. There will be a minor delay. It's pushed back to 7.15 here in the Eastern Time Zone. So just pushed back about 10 minutes from what we had planned. Joe Nomar, Lana joins us in a moment. When it does get going, it's going to be a great pitching matchup. Aaron Nola contending for the Cy Young at this point for the Phillies. And Kenta Maeda has been fantastic the last month for the Dodgers. Well, he's been pitching like a Cy Young, Kenta Maeda. When you look over his last four, four starts, he's been outstanding. His ERA is about 1.4. He's been bit better than that even when you take Take it back of his last 10 appearances an ERA under two. It's really been that changeup that's been the game changer. Aaron Nola, like you mentioned, pitching for a Cy Young, trying to match the league lead in wins with 13 today. That would be what Max Scherzer has his unbeaten at home this year. This team's played a really entertaining game last night. Back and forth they went. The Dodgers came from behind to win it late. And tonight trying to win the series over the Phillies. We've got first pitch coming up in just a few from Philadelphia.
Loco. Try the new queso loaded double queso quesadilla only at El Pollo Loco, fresh from the grill. Well, this isn't too bad. Moved back about 10 minutes. Still some rain in the forecast, but hopefully we stay clear the rest of the way as Maeda and Nola get ready to face off. And for more on those two, we go down to the field brought to you by El Pollo Loco with Alana. All right, Joe, thanks very much. Two of the best in the game as far as the National League is concerned. Going head to head in this matchup between two first place teams, Aaron Nola as well as Kenta Maeda tops. As far as ERA is concerned since May 17th, Jacob DeGrom of the New York Mets, a 166 earned run average. Kenta Maeda as well as Ross Stripling, another Dodger on the list. Aaron Nola of the Philadelphia Phillies, a 256 earned run average, guys. All right, Alana, and in those numbers for Kenta Maeda, there is a start against Philadelphia, but that was the one where he tweaked his hip and left in the second inning. And it's really been since he came back from that injury that he's been at his very best. And really the pitch that we really have noticed, the swing and miss, the game changer that Dave Roberts talked about. They were asking about Kenta Maeda. It's been that changeup. His changeup has been outstanding. He's holding it more like a split finger, and a split finger grip, changing it up. And it really has been devastating and has increased the amount of strikeouts that he is throwing right now. Nine straight four strikeout games for him. Chase Utley's farewell tour return or continues with uh, a trip to home plate to exchange lineup cards. They put it up on the video board here and once the fans in attendance got wind of it he got a huge hand walking off. Not in there today. We'll see if he's in the starting lineup tomorrow. It is another right handed pitcher so a chance that Chase could be in there. Uh, got to play last night. And what a reception. Oh incredible well deserved reception. I know Chase she was probably going up there and telling home plate umpire hey Tom Hallian you know I know I'm coming back to Philly here but you better be nice to our pitcher and give him a good strike zone. <laughs> <laughs> be good to Kenta. <laughs> Philly fanatic getting them ready to go as lineup cards have been exchanged just a few moments from first pitch now. The Dodgers in first place in the National League West. Game and a half ahead of the Diamondbacks who rolled the Cubs last night. They'll play game two tonight 805 Eastern Kyle Hendricks goes for the Cubs and play Buckholz has been a nice pickup for the Diamondbacks countering for Arizona. Rockies meanwhile had last night off they open a series with the Houston Astros tonight so a tough stretch coming for them. Now they have been the best team in the National League here in July the only team with a better record than the Dodgers this month are those Rockies. Dodgers 13 and 5 in July. And as you do at the start of each night we tend to look back to the middle of May and see what the record is since the team fell 10 games below 500 and it's a nice round number right now they are 40 and 18 since that point. Every year when you have a success you always look back at, back at a certain time when was that turning point we definitely been looking at May 17th as that turning point for the Dodgers things definitely changed incredible record since then. And looking to continue, I think that's like the good date when you start saying they were playing the way we expected the Dodgers to start playing. Even early on, Dave Roberts was talking about we're just not playing good baseball, we're not in sync together, and that's when it started. Tall task tonight facing this guy, one of the best young pitchers in the game, and Aaron Nola has not lost in this ballpark this season. The Phillies this season and his starts overall are 17 and 3. Take a look at the Dodger lineup for this one. With Jock Peterson to lead things off, coming off a very impressive game last night. And it's Machado, who sits second now in all five games in the Dodger uniform. Muncie went deep last night, so did Grandall, so did Taylor. So Dodgers hit four home runs in that 7 6 win. Cody Bellinger bat sixth. Kike Hernandez starting at second with Alex Verdugo getting his first start in more than two months against Aaron Nola who is second in the National League behind Scherzer and wins and he's second in the National League behind DeGrom with that 230 earned run average. And we were just talking about the amount of home runs that the Dodgers hit yesterday. We know the amount of home runs leading the National League in home runs as a team but they're facing a pitcher right now 
who is, has the lowest home run per nine inning ratio in the National League. He's only allowed six home runs total this year and has been outstanding as you mentioned at home with an 8 0 record with a 1.71 ERA in a hitter friendly ballpark. It is worth mentioning though you mentioned the six home runs that he's given up this year and you did mention how well they hit it out of the park last night. Remember Zach Eflin had given up exactly six home runs all season coming in the Dodgers hit three against him. And then if you're wondering if Nola has pitched against the Dodgers well in his career he's two and zero with just a one point nine three ERA. And the last time he pitched against the Dodgers was on May 31st where he went seven innings just allowed two hits and one run and striking out seven Dodgers. So we're all set with. No rain at the moment skies really opened up what about quarter to seven or so and uh, they put the tarp on it. they really managed it well talk about game management from a manager's perspective. Well, whoever is calling the shots on when to put the tarp on and when to get it off and when to get this game going a plus. We were a little bit shocked we were like why are they putting the tarp on because <laughs> there wasn't any rain and then it just came down. Peterson stands in. Now Faro flashing the signs to Nola who winds and deals and off we go with a fastball strike. Really impressive night for Jock Peterson last night. He hit the hardest home run of the season by a Dodger. But that probably wasn't even his most impressive moment. Go to that ninth inning rally against Sir Anthony Dominguez when he worked an eight pitch at bat and singled on a 100 mile per hour fastball in that same direction the left field. Lead off single Jack Peterson. Well he did it yesterday off the fastball. This one he does it on the breaking ball staying back nicely going the other way. That was really a good at bat. I mean Jock had a great at bat in that ninth inning and really to start off that ninth Alex Verdugo had a great one. Up comes Manny Machado. And a good first week for him in a Dodger uniform. Really been a good month for him. Back to his final few weeks when he was with Baltimore. He's reached in 23 games in a row. Extended that last night with a big triple and eventually came in to score the tying run on a sacrifice fly from Max Muncy. And that triple was impressive because he was hustling to earn that triple and recognizing how important it was with one out so he can get the sacrifice fly and then hustling to score on a shallow ball to center field. He's behind Nola 0 and 2. I think a few things again when you don't see a player every day when he's in the other league going to be things that surprise you. For me the first thing was how big he is. And then as you see him a few days it was the quality of the approach and then on that sacrifice fly it was the speed didn't realize that he could move like that. Nola brings him in 0 2 Machado can't lay off one out. He gets two strikes on him with the fastball at 95 miles an hour and then he just breaks off a tight slider that looks like a fastball coming out of his hand and it fooled Machado. That is his best strikeout pitch. Top five in the league in strikeouts this season. Now he faces Muncie. But one of the four home runs for the Dodgers last night. Also had a single, walked, and that sacrifice fly we talked about. Breaks one in for a strike. So Aaron Nola. Really emerging as one of the great young starters in the National League. He's only 25, originally from Louisiana. 
where he was the seventh overall pick in 2014 out of LSU. Debuted a year later. Now in his fourth year with Major League time, but really emerging this season. Once he hits it foul on its own two. Now 2016 for Nola his ERA was near five and then he missed the final two months of the year with the strain in his elbow and there were questions at that point from the Phillies and people around baseball about his durability long term what he was going to be and obviously hopes that he'd be a frontline starter when they take him seventh overall but they were reevaluating their expectations. That's outside and it's one and two and he bounces back last year record was around 500. ERA was around three and a half but especially good in the second half and has carried that into this season. One on one out. And a one two pitch. Once he hits it in the air to left. Hoskins back on it to the warning track at the wall to catch it. I don't know why I think it's going to fly OK again tonight. We saw that a lot last last night and not just with the home runs but there were a lot of balls just like that hit to the outfield that were caught where you just saw the outfielders just kind of going back back looked like they had a beat on it in the first second you're like well maybe this one is going to go out. But two out here's Yasmani Grandal. Added to his monster month of July with a home run last night. Healthy cut and a miss, and it's 0 1. He is number one in baseball and on base percentage this month with an absurd 537 clip. Great month for Yasmani Grandal. Find a way to get on base. Swinging a bat, seeing it. He was getting interviewed last night by Alana. And Alana was asking him about the success he's had. He said, I felt like I was swinging the bat well last month, or I was hitting a lot of balls hard. It was I just believed in myself, stay with the approach, and they're falling in for him. I was like, well, they're not just falling in, you're also seeing the ball well and finding ways to get on. Falling in to the stands. Mm -hmm. Oh, two. That breaks slow. Peterson leads it first. One ball and two strikes, and Grandall swings and golfs one into short center field that sends Valentin back. Herrera charges on and apparently caught him off, but couldn't get there. Valentin bails at the final moment, and the door left open here in the first. A miscommunication. By the Phillies out there in center field and second base. You saw Hernandez calling it, saying, I got it, I got it. And then all of a sudden he heard something and just moved out of the way. I'm sorry, that was Valentin that was out there and just said, Okay. I mean, when you hear something as an infielder, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not just, you hear something, you, you get out of the way, you clear it because he's coming in hard. And all gets a hit out of it. And you would assume that he was saying got it but Herrera was saying something at the top of his lungs wound up not getting there. So first and third two out and Chris Taylor gets an opportunity. Shows bunt takes a strike. You don't get many of these opportunities against guys like Nola. At least lately, the Dodgers have the right guy up there to try and cash in. We go from Grandall, who leads baseball and on base percentage in July, to Chris Taylor, who leads the National League in RBIs in July.
one Takes it in the dirt, kicks away from Alfaro. Here comes Peterson. He's in there, and the Dodgers lead it in the first. Got his hand in away from the tag of Nola, and the Dodgers have taken advantage of the sloppy defense. The jock hustling down. It didn't kick really far. Nola doing getting there, getting to the plate. The jock. Recognizing where he's about to tag. Well, look at this slide. Doesn't worry about his feet, but gets the hand in there to avoid the tag. Basically, just beats Nola to home plate. Because if Nola gets there sooner, he's in a better position to receive that ball and possibly put a better tag out in front of home plate. There are no errors in this inning, but. A bad defensive miscommunication and then a wild pitch leading to the Dodgers first run. And that has been somewhat of a theme for these Phillies. There was a drop pop up on Sunday afternoon first game of the doubleheader against the Padres which was key in that game. And on the season only two teams have committed more errors. On a one two Chris Taylor cuts and misses and that's that for the Dodgers in the first but able to get one against Nola and gets a Maeda to the mound when you come back. A moment ago, we got it from the Phillies dugout. Chase tipped his cap again. It's almost as if he, you know, he's always, always reluctant to have the attention, but then he thinks to himself, you know what? This is my last time here. I will doff the cap again and pay tribute back to these fans that love him so much. So here come the Phillies already in a one nothing hole with this lineup Cesar Hernandez to lead it off in front of Reese Hoskins and Odubel Herrera who both hit home runs in last night's game Santana Franco and Williams in the middle third of the order with Valentin and Alfaro to round it out in front of Nola. Ketamite has had nine strikeouts and four starts in a row and in that span Nomar his ERA is one forty two. His last four starts, he's been outstanding. And 36 strikeouts and just 25 in a third innings pitched. Overall, when you just look at his, even his last 10 appearances, you can go back even further. His nine starts, he actually came out of the bullpen right before the All Star break. He just had a 1.95 ERA. 101. Hitter is just batting under 200, about a 178 clip against him. Throws the curve and it misses two on one. On Hernandez, who's 
off of the bench yesterday is their full time leadoff hitter but he's been dealing with a sore foot after fouling a ball off of it a couple weeks ago and then hitting a the ball off of the same spot over the weekend. On a 2 1 watches a fastball miss. So the numbers he's put up against Maeda lifetime couple doubles and a home run. So Dave Kapler making sure he's back in there tonight. Leading things off for the Phillies with a chopper to first that Muncie gobbles up. One out. We were talking a little bit about it at the top of the game. Really, the difference that we have seen from McKenta Maeda has really been the changeup. Dave Roberts, last time Maeda was pitching, was asked about what the difference has been, and he mentioned his changeup. And it really has been the game changer that Dave Roberts talks about. It because it's been that good and that effective. He changed the grip on it, went more to a, a split finger type grip on it. And just the movement has really been able to just fall off the table. Reese Hoskins with one out. Looks at a fastball, strike one. Now Dave also said, you know, while the changeup is the one that stands out, it's been how effective he's been with his fastball that's allowed him to do that. Got to have fastball command. When you have fastball command, you're able to set up. Your slider, your changeup. Because hitters start looking for that fastball. And then when you have a ball like his split finger, his changeup that's coming out that looks like a fastball coming out of his hand, and then the bottom falls out of there. Well, that's where you get a lot of the swings and misses. Here comes to the 1 1. Uh, one misses the spot, and it's 2 and 1. Yeah, last four starts. Opponents against his fastball hitting 152. Before that, it was above 300. He's falling behind a dangerous hitter. And he's back home with a 2 1. Hoskins watches ball three. Hoskins homered last night, tying the game against Ross Stripling. Third consecutive game that Hoskins has gone deep. A rare rough one for Ross, at least in the final line. For those five runs coming with two out in his final inning. Three one. Flied foul, three and two. Talking about the run that Hoskins is on. He's been very streaky this season and actually didn't have a home run in the month of July before this three game stretch where he's gone deep in each. Well, home run derby slumps. Well, Reese Hoskins is quite all right. He's not experienced one because, as you mentioned, is homered in three consecutive games after participating in the home run derby. And on the flip side, Max Muncy batting 400, home run. Couple of doubles since the home run derby. Ida gets in on his hands. He flexes it foul. Yeah, so it's it's gotten so Hoskins got going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really think that format helps as well because now more guys are almost taking an idea as like batting practice because you have a time and you can just start swinging and you don't always. Think about just pulling all the time. Not saying that they're not trying to pull and do that. That's what you do when you're trying to hit home run, especially in a home run derby. A pop up on the infield. Muncie's been involved in each of the first two out. But when you feel like you might be off over a course of the new format, you can maybe go take a swing or a couple back up the middle or think about trying to hit some. Out of maybe center field to get your swing back on track because if you don't, it's not just like an out if you don't hit it out, you have that time to get your reef back on track. Well, after Hoskins tied the game against Stripling last night, Herrero is the next batter and he gave the Phillies the lead. Now that's back to back games for him. 18 total this season for the 26 year old who was an all star last year.
Perfectly placed fastball and it's 0 1. An all star last year and then off to an MVP type start with a 41 game on base streak to open the season for Herrera. Chatham among the leaders in all of baseball and on base percentage. But since that on base streak ended, he's been near the bottom of baseball and on base percentage. I mean, it's one thing to cool off a little bit, but to go from the very top to the very bottom, this game is humbling. <laughs> it really is. And anybody who plays it, that's why you baseball players always say you don't want to get too high, too low. You try to stay even keel throughout because you know in an instant this game can do that to you. It can just like the day you're four for four, have an unbelievable day. Seeing it looks like a beach ball coming up, coming in there. Because you know the very next day could be easily now going 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. It's the beach ball becomes a pinball. Yeah. A one two. As Maeda's changeup is taken off and he's gotten better results with a fastball, where that's manifested is especially against left handed hitters. Which he's facing here with two out and the bases empty in the first. Switch hitter that'll bat left handed on deck in Santana. A 2 2. Grounded to second. Hernandez to finish off a 1 2 3 first for Kenta Maeda. Off and rolling in Philadelphia after an inning the Dodgers in front one nothing. Joe, thanks very much. A quick update for you on right-hander Tom Kohler, who was signed by the Dodgers in the app in the offseason to hopefully bolster the bullpen, was placed on the disabled list on March 26th for an injury that he sustained early on in spring training. Right shoulder strain. He's been doing his best, trying everything he can to be able to get back onto a big league man. Unfortunately, today it was announced that Tom Kohler has had season-ending shoulder surgery. He is done for the year. Horrible news for Tom and for the Dodgers as Cody Bellinger leads off this second and takes a strike. Dave Roberts has remarked multiple times that nobody was working harder than Tom Kohler to get back. So a huge bummer. That's inside and it's one and one. Dave Roberts is also talking about some other injuries and for fans are wondering about Yasiel Puig. Well, he's playing today in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's carved out down the line to left. Franco not going to get there. 
Yeah, you're gonna have a couple games. It sounds like yeah. there. Yeah, and they're hoping that um, the ball goes the way as planned. You play a couple games there and looking to join the team and possibly be activated on Saturday. The teams in Atlanta. Alana, you've got more on Puig. Well, Yaziel Puig is supposed to be there on Saturday, and it looks like right-handed reliever Pedro Baez will beat him to Atlanta by one day. Dave Roberts saying that Pedro Baez was able to get up and down and got four outs in his outing with the Oklahoma City Dodgers. It looks like he is on his way back as well. Looks to be with the team on Thursday in Atlanta, guys. All right. Bellinger pops another foul, and then you've got Tony Singrani, who's making progress in his rehab. Josh Fields doing the same. Sounds like Singrani is a step or two ahead of Fields on the comeback trail. Yeah, and he even mentioned about Ryu as well, going right. back there and possibly in a week, maybe headed to get a re uh, go on a re rehab assignment. But he's going to take a while. It's almost like going through an entire spring training for Ryu. Another one-two from Nola and a strikeout of Bellinger to open the second. Dave Roberts said you know, the number that popped to mind: at least four rehab starts for Hunjin Ryu. But the fact that we're talking rehab starts is good progress. That it is. With one out of the second inning, Kike Hernandez up for his first at bat of this series. Nola lets it fly, and Hernandez takes it upstairs. PK made his way to Chase Utley's press conference yesterday just to be there as a show of respect. And was interviewed by several writers, several reporters. It's about their relationship and how close they've grown. Down and away, and it's two and one. They worked out together this offseason, and then at spring training, they would get together every morning. 6:30 breakfast and then a workout before the full day of practices started. Such an unlikely pairing, those two. You can't find a more serious guy than Chase or a goofier guy than Kike. Two balls, two strikes. Opposites attract, I guess. And uh, Kike yesterday wearing his dad's picture shirt, <laughs> t shirt yeah. that he wears. Chase Utley's picture right on the front. On this 2 2, Hernandez puts it in the air left center. Hoskins and Herrera, two out. <laughs> Dodgers one, Phillies nothing. Top two, and here comes Alex Verdugo. First start for Alex since May 8th. Went back down to Triple A, and you hope that when a guy gets sent back down, that they, you know, there's no pouting, and there's no drop off. My goodness, there certainly was not. He was tearing it up in Oklahoma City, 3.49 average, which was third in the Pacific Coast League. Very good on base, very good slugging. And then is that bat to start the ninth inning last night against Sir Anthony Dominguez looked like he had never left. It looked like he was able to just pick up and recognize the 99 mile an hour fastball, 90 mile an hour slider. One and one. And fan to join in us today. You know he's he's on the roster because of Justin Turner going on the DL, and they were asked about Andrew Tolles. Dave Roberts was asked about Andrew Tolles as compared to Verdugo, and he said, "Well, Tolles is dealing with a bit of a hamstring issue. So, and then also he goes, there's that, and also the way Verdugo was playing, earned it. <laughs> yeah, had been earning it. It was just a matter of there being an opportunity. Two balls and a strike. Nola deals. Verdugo takes the fastball just high, and it's three and one. Just 
turned 22 years old in mid May. On this 3 1 pitch, he watches it miss off of the plate by a few inches, and those are some impressive takes there against one of the National League's bats. Often overlooked is how big that walk is with two outs being the eighth hitter to get the pitcher up, or at least that walk, the lineup to turn over. So here is Maeda. But in the second, instead of leading off the third. Swings away and grounds it by the back foul. Healthy looking cut. Well, he's been watching over there in the dugout. It's like, uh, it doesn't look like anybody, you don't want to get behind on Nola with that slider. So he's like, I'm going to be aggressive. He gives me a fastball I could handle. I'm going to swing. Faro tried to pull it back. Home plate umpire Tom Hallion, veteran crew chief, wasn't buying it. These Phillies won six in a row to start July, but have gone six and seven since. And start the night tied with the Atlanta Braves for first in the East. Both teams ahead of the Nationals by six full games still. A bit of a light rain starting to fall. Enough to send some of the folks yeah. for the concourses. Started off light and then it's a little bit heavier. Nola's 1 1 pitch. Turn around, people. Yeah. The ball, because a lot of people's backs are to the field right now as they're trying to get out of the rain. I'm like, turn around, ball coming in the stands. Coming down pretty good. Yeah. Started off light. Verdugo at first with two out and a one two pitch that Maeda grounds gently to a charging Franco. Picks up that wet baseball and throws it over to get Maeda. Finish the Dodgers in the second.
Dodgers baseball is brought to you by the Southern California BMW centers hurry in today for the BMW summer on sales event for exceptional offers details at SoCalBMW.com and by Jack in the box try the 499 Jack spicy chicken club combo with toasted sourdough new from Jack in the box. Well, the ground crew and home plate umpire Tom Hallion crew chief. The chat in between innings the rain backed off some. And again for the moment it should be fine as long as you got your rain gear. How many fans went back and probably going I think I need a towel to get a lot of the people working here bringing towels out and having to wipe the seats down because it would come down pretty hard and then now it's okay. Might have made the last out and so it took his time getting back to the mound. He just now got out there to begin his warm up tosses. Well fans you can manage your dream team in franchise mode plus get weekly stats roster updates and more RBI baseball 18 is available now. Learn more at RBI Rated E for everyone. One two three first inning for Kenta. Santana Franco and Williams do up here in the second for the Phillies. Santana hit leadoff last night for the second time this year with Cesar Hernandez having the night off. He's back into his usual cleanup role tonight. Slumping lately, six for his last 49. Swings away at the first pitch and grounds it right into the shift. One pitch, one out, and four up, four down. Swinging at the first pitch, well, you have Maeda for the season on first pitch is 342 average against Maeda on that first pitch. I'd say you don't want to get behind on him because if he gets 0 and 1 on a hitter, hitters are just averaging 167 against him. So that first pitch is really critical for both sides. Michael Franco with one out in a one nothing game here in the second. First pitch curve which Maeda likes to do gets him a strike. Uh, maybe the hottest Phillies hitter. 354 over the last month. Two home run game last night. The 0 1 pitch. Misses 1 and 1. Two. Those two home runs that he hit last night, just a continuation of what he's been doing. First one got the Phillies on the board and then did it against Kenley Jansen on the very first pitch of the night. He gets a hanging breaking ball and then he wasn't going to wait around for the cutter and get behind on Kenley. He gets a cutter that looks like it was more just kind of the cement mixer just spinning in the inner half. But two really good swings. So much. Now 15 total this year for the 25 year old. Who chases here, two out. Kenta Maeda gets more chases on that slider than all but one pitch in baseball from any pitcher. Only Patrick Corbin's slider gets more chases and swings and misses. Well, in that slow mo replay that we just saw, you get the ball coming out of his hand. It just comes out. And it looks exactly like his fastball. 
Matter of fact, he's got that slider and his changeup that look exactly like his fastball as far as delivery coming out, the trajectory that it's on coming out of his hand. And that one, ha and it has a late break. Both of his pitches, both of those off-speed pitches have a late break. It's the third batter that he's started with a curve to get strike one. It's Nick Williams, who's homered against him twice. Can't lay off, and it's nothing in two. Tightening that slider up, using it like a cutter. You see that, but you see, there you see how it looks. It looks like his fastball coming in there. That's why he was committed to swinging at that pitch. And then it wasn't so late that he recognized, like, oh, well, that's breaking on me. Coming up with an 0-2. Uh, Williams barely gets a piece to stay alive. Hitting 300 here in July and has performed so well that he's gone from being a backup to a part time player to the full time starter and that's meant that Aaron Altair who started the season as a starting right fielder is now in triple A. Williams finds himself in an 0 2 hole as Maeda pitches able to put it in play tough hop but Hernandez adjusts and throws him out. Six up, six down for Kenta Maeda with a little bit of help from his defense right there. Catches the lip. But the athlete, Kike Hernandez, can make the adjustment and make it look easy. Goes to the third. They lead Aaron Nola and the Phillies 1 0. Top of the order again. It's Jack Peterson. Started this game with a single and came in to score the run. And it's a continuation of a trend that has developed on this second half road trip. Leadoff hitters, which have been Peterson and Taylor, reaching at almost a 500 clip or batting average at almost a 500 clip. He takes strike one from Nola. Coincidence? But that comes with Manny Machado hitting second. I think these guys, Chris Taylor and Bo Jock Peterson, have been swinging the bat at well as of late. But I think Manny Machado batting second, putting him in that lineup definitely helps. You know, we always talk about when you have a, a bat like Manny Machado, Justin Turner, you put these guys in back in the lineup, it helps guys hitting around them in front, behind. Two and one. And for Peterson, five hits and eight at bats on this road trip. Ahead of Nola, who fires a two one, and Peterson chops one over the mound. Valentin for the first out. A 
Up comes Machado. He's always been the best player, whatever age he's been at. Whatever team he was on, he was a standout guy. But as far as the explosiveness that you see in everything he does, that kind of came later. Started to develop that when he was a senior in high school. Which was good timing with that draft around the corner. He looks at strike one from Nola. Started to work out with the University of Miami players when he was 17, fall of his senior year. In November, he couldn't jump high enough to touch the backboard of a basketball hoop. And a few months later, he was dunking just with all the explosive work they went through, all the plyometric stuff they did. A couple months after that, third overall pick in the draft. Not that he wouldn't have been had he not started dunking, but <laughs> you get the point. Oh, another level of athleticism that he added. Nola gets in on him. Little pop up into short left center that Hernandez puts away. It's not surprising for Machado that being able to dunk was his measuring stick because he does like basketball and he was talking about that when he came over. Two up, two down for Nola, and here's Muncie. Who hit what looked like a routine fly ball to left his first time, but it carried all the way to the wall where Hoskins caught it. Uh, the first pitch here, he cuts and misses on a fastball. Something we haven't seen Muncie do too often is miss a pitch in the middle of the plate. It was a mistake by Nola. They wanted that ball away. Got away with one. One on one. Off the end of the bat and foul, and it's one and two. Been a few different guys that have hit third so far in this road trip. Machado's been second every game. We mentioned the two guys that have shared time in the leadoff spot. The top third of the order on this trip, reaching more than half of the time on base percentage above 500. Here, Nola strikes him out and goes one, two, three to the top of that order. To the bottom of the third, Dodgers one, Phillies nothing.
all access look at an exciting MLB All-Star Week for the Dodgers that started with a fun performance from a breakout star and ended with the news of a blockbuster trade. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers presented by Cadillac Friday after the postgame show on Sportsnet LA. Back here in Philadelphia where the Dodgers have a one nothing lead to the bottom of the third. Six up six down so far for Kenta Maeda. So it's a seven hitter Jeswell Valentin to lead things off. Strike one. Valentin was a Dodger at one point. Not just a Dodger but a first round pick. In the 2012 draft out of Puerto Rico. And then traded to the Phillies a couple of years after that. Cuts and misses at a big curve, and he's in an 0 2 hole. One and two. Just well became a dad a few weeks ago in late June. Baby girl named her Zimena. The one two. There's that change up. One out in the third. And just the movement on this pitch. We once again you can see as he's releasing it, as it's headed, as it's headed to the strike zone. Look just like a slider. Look like his fastball, and then that breaks the opposite way. Slider would break down and in. Lefty, and that one's breaking down and away. Gets his second strikeout of the night. Up comes Jorge Alfaro. Strike one. Sprinkling in that curve more and more. Hey, is that the sun? Yeah, just because you were asking for it. Jeez, if it was that simple, it'd be sunny every day. <laughs> Fastball got a little more of the plate than he wanted. Got away with it. It's 0 2. To Alfaro. Fastball ate him up. Pushed it foul and we'll do it again. Ed Sfida, our stats man here, reminds us that it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Well played. Yeah, well played. I'm really upset yeah, myself that, that I wasn't on that first. Chase Utley was a guest on that show. He was? Yeah. Not surprising. Or you have to get the man on that show, right? Yeah. Another 0 2. Wouldn't bite on that slider. Ball one. Kentamaeda, some of his best stuff here in his third year in the majors. 30 years old from Osaka, Japan. Here comes his one two. Got him swinging. Two out. Well, there's that change up again. When we talked about it just the bottom just dropping out of it. And that see as Monte Grandal he wanted it down even almost in the dirt. He didn't even need it to get it that low. That caught even the bottom part of the strike zone. It's just a devastating pitch. That's why Dave Roberts says yeah that pitch could be a game changer. Two up, two down. Here's Aaron Nola. I had to try to go perfect once to the Phillies order. That fastball's low. They started using the changeup more and more. 
through the end of June. It was once every 10 pitches or so. Since then, it's once every five pitches, and look at the results. In the air to right, Verdugo is there. And Kenta Maeda with a few perfect innings to get his night off and rolling. Dodgers in front, 1 0 in Philly. August 1st when the Dodgers host the Brewers all fans in attendance can purchase one dollar Dodger dogs buy up to five Dodger dogs per person per transaction and visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. We always say to prepare for August 1st make sure you go to the bank get a lot of five dollar bills just to come prepare go out there. You don't have to buy five, but why wouldn't you share with everybody that's maybe sitting around you who didn't get a chance to go get in line? It's very thoughtful. Right. I'm ready for August 1st. I feel armed with the advice I need to take full advantage. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, Nolda made the final out of the third, and so, like my eight of last inning, just getting out there. Randall will lead things off, then Taylor, then Bellinger. Middle third of the order coming up for the Dodgers, who were able to cash in in that first inning thanks to the bad defense and thanks to a wild pitch. And we had said right before the wild pitch, you don't get many opportunities against guys like Nola, so you've got to take advantage when you do. And two innings since then, just one base runner. Yeah, and if you actually look at the numbers for Nola, that's actually the innings where you wanted to take advantage and try to score some runs because Nola's breaks blitz. As far as per inning, in the first inning, his ERA is over five. It's 5.4 coming into today. Obviously, increased with that run. But after that, all the rest of the innings combined, it's the 1.7 ERA after that. So it is key to try to put something on them early. The Dodgers were able to do that, but it seems like he's settling down. That they have to find a way to try to get some more opportunities. As Grandall's bloop single that set the stage for that first run. He looks at strike one. And now takes ball one. You know, the Phillies, as we've talked about, in first place, but Aaron Nola was their only all star. And impressed in D.C. A scoreless inning of work. He struck out Sal Perez. He struck out Mookie Betts. That's foul one and two. Did give up a hit to Jose Altuve, but then was able to finish the inning by getting Mike Trout to pop up weekly. Surprising, isn't it? Just one all-star for them. Yeah, from a team that's at the top of the division. Two and two. 
Although it, it's kind of a reflection of the season they've had. When you look at the numbers and you look at the names, there's nothing that really stands out to you and says this is why the Phillies are in first. They've just found a way. Count goes full. We were talking about coming into the series. They played a lot of one run games. Their record in those one one run games was 28 and 8. Yesterday make it 20 and 9. Yesterday. But they they find a way to win those close games. They stay in there. They had 29 comeback come from behind victories this year. Grandall lifts one. Right center field and deep. Yes, Monty Grandall is red hot. That thing is long gone, and the Dodgers lead it 2 0. We were talking about the first inning. Nola does not give up many home runs. But when you're swinging the bat as well as Yasmani Grandal to stay back on a changeup, stay on it, not pulling off of it, and driving it, no doubter, he drops the bat. We've seen it as <laughs> numerous times as Dodger fans. When he's dropping the bat, you know he's got it. Chris Taylor swings at the first pitch. That's foul, and it's 0 1. So back to back games with a long ball for Grandal and 15 total this year. Oh and two. CT just missed that pitch. It was a breaking ball. He recognized it. At first he was a little bit out in front, but he did a good job keeping his hands back and his body back. Just swings underneath it. Got a fastball by him for the first out of the fourth. A solo home run for the Dodgers. 97 of the 136 that they've hit this year have been solo shots. And that is the most in the majors by a pretty wide stretch. 2 0 in the fourth. Here's Cody Bellinger. He fouls it off, strike one. Bellinger looking for his first hit of this series. On this 0 1 from Nola, he chases and is behind 0 2. Ground ball base hit. Bellinger beating the shift for a one out single. That was a nice job by Cody Bellinger on that one. This one he doesn't fly open. See that front hip stayed in there on that breaking ball. Really doesn't fly open. In the first pitch it was an off speed down in the zone. And it and that front hip flew open and swung and missed. That's an adjustment. Staying on that. Another off speed pitch, but staying on it to get that base hit up the middle. So one on one out. Here's Kike Hernandez. Dodgers in front of the Phillies, 2 0 here in the fourth, trying to clinch a series win. And trying to move to 4 and 1 on this road trip to open the second half. From here they go to Atlanta then back home for the Brewers and the Astros.
Oh, they got him. That Cody looked like he had just kind of flinched towards second. Before he came over, you know, he was just a quick move and just got him. Cody knew it. It wasn't a flinch, it was just kind of froze a little bit. So now two out with the bases empty. And Hernandez checks his swing on a breaking ball, but went around and it's 0 2. Ball one. For Nola, that's his third pickoff of the season. It's a pretty good number for a right-handed pitcher. That was a quick, quick move. Spun around, and you know he's got the velocities. <laughs> Put a strike over there. Hernandez drives the ball to right center field, but Nick Williams is there to finish the Dodgers in the fourth. But they double the lead, and a Yasmani Grandal home run, and no doubt shot to right center. His second in his many nights to the bottom of the four. Against Kenta Maeda as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Joe Davis, Nomar Garcia Parr, and Alana Rizzo. Game two from Philadelphia. Dodgers winning 7 6 last night. Yeah, trying to clinch a series win tonight. Top of the order, Cesar Hernandez takes a first pitch curve. Strike one. Hernandez, over the last three years, has the third best on base percentage of all leadoff hitters. Goes Matt Carpenter, Charlie Blackman, and then Hernandez. He flips a fly ball to short right. It becomes an easy catch for Alex Verdugo. He wouldn't necessarily pop to mind, would he? Cesar Hernandez when you're thinking of that list, but he's turned into a very reliable guy at the top of their order. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't have popped into my mind when you're talking about number three. You know, I understand the first two you're talking about, like, yeah, okay. Here's Hoskins. You're talking about how what is it that these Phillies being in first place what is it there's really nothing that just jumps uh, the, the paper but they're just solid like such as that and you're like okay he's getting on base doing the job at the top of the order getting on base so the other guys can find ways to knock him in. 
First one to Hoskins down and away for a ball. They're a year ahead of schedule at least in what publicly have been stated as the plan. And even though they're in first place at 55 and 44 it's the youngest team in baseball. Hoskins in the air foul ground right side. Muncie's over out of room. Hoskins part of that youth 25 years old first full major league season for the Sacramento native. Who went undrafted out of high school he was a great player. But he never played in any of the showcases at travel ball leagues because he wanted to be able to play three sports and devote as much attention to football and basketball as he did baseball. He was a post player in basketball. And I love the grind of the football two a days. Can't lay off one and two. Did you like the two a days. You know. No not not in the middle of it. But looking back don't you kind of yearn to be back to those days. Yeah. And you know it does doesn't it feel like it almost to you closer to your teammates because you were going through those together. Oh, sure. yeah. One two. The Hoskins may be the first guy ever to say that he likes two a days soon after uh, he's finished with it. I think it takes years yeah. for most to admit that. Yeah I'm wondering if he was did he say that. Yeah. Was he saying that right after them. Oh I love these. <laughs> you don't say it out loud. Around your teammates, if you, if no, you do, look at you like you have two heads. <laughs> two two pitch, got him swinging, and two out in the fourth inning. Well, let's take another look with the Carl's cam on that changeup of Kenta Maeda. He's getting the swings and misses, the different breaks. Breaks right, one breaks left. What's setting it all up is the fastball command, catching the corners early on with the breaking ball, getting first pitch strikes, getting ahead. Right now he's utilizing everything and having control of everything. But two out in the fourth inning, it's Herrera. Maeda to Odubel, strike one as Odubel swings himself out of his helmet. Something that he did a bunch earlier in his career, and he's toned down the swing, so hasn't seen that as much lately. Yeah, he didn't want to get cheated on that one. And he didn't. We talked about getting to Kenta Maeda early first pitch. He was going to wait around. They change up 0 and 2. You saw where Yasmani wanted this. You saw how he was going down. He's like, I want this one down. Yeah, he missed his spot. But then there are good misses too. And that was a good miss because yeah, you may not have been able to get it down, but you got it on the outer half. You got it away. Quick pitches him and a base hit to left center. First base runner of the game is Maeda. It's a little bit cute, which I'm surprised. You've been you've been pitching so well. You've been in command of everything. There was really no need to do that. It, it, it is interesting because Maeda shook off for that. He was she shook off Yasmani Grandal. It looked like that's what he was thinking like OK I'll get a fastball and try to sneak one in. And Herrera was ready. Well, gave up your first hit that way you know. Try to be cute give it up now now it's just time to say OK regroup regroup don't let that one trying to be cute hurt you right here. 
Get back to what you've been doing, catching the corners. He did that, but he's been doing. Got ahead, got ahead on the breaking ball. And I believe that is six hitters, and I'll double check this, but six hitters that he's gotten a first pitch strike with that curve. That's strike two with a fastball over the changeup. Quick pitch to McGinn. Yeah. <laughs> and he almost got him. Herrera wasn't looking. He was he was taken by surprise. He was only like just a step away from the bag. Santana up foul. Four of the five strikeouts Kenta Maeda tonight have come off of the changeup, and it's really a match made in heaven for Maeda and the Dodgers tonight with how good his changeup has been lately. Because the Phillies are the worst hitting team in baseball against changeups. He goes back to it and it's put in place softly to second. Hernandez throws him out. Phillies get their first base runner, but that's all. And after four innings, Maid and the Dodgers lead it 2 0. Your Southern California Toyota dealers. Now, with easy summer savings, get a great deal on a bold new Toyota Camry. Back in Philadelphia, where Alex Verdugo set the lead off the fifth inning for the Dodgers. They'll be this one 2 0. 13 and 5 in July and 40 and 18 since mid May. Best in the National League during that stretch. Twenty two year old Alex Verdugo watches ball one. He watched ball four his first time. And has walked in both of his plate appearances since getting called up. Now he's ahead two and oh. Alex used his signing bonus when he was drafted in the second round a couple years ago. On a vintage 1965 Chevy Impala. Burgundy. Classic. It's two and one. It was an opportunity for him to bond with his dad. 
Very close with his dad Joe. Joe loves working on cars himself. Together they installed new air system, new suspension, sound system of course. Can we get a new sound system in there and several other things they did to the car. Johnson misses two and two. I'm gonna have to ask Alex to see a picture of that. Sounds beautiful. Oh yeah, that's my my dream car is a '61 Impala convertible. Really? Mm -hmm. What color? I like burgundy, mm -hmm. red. Wraps around the plate. Full count. So yeah, Alex Verdugo, big car guy. Mentioned close with his dad Joe, very close with his mom Shelley as well. Waits on this 3 2 and takes ball four. Three plate appearances and three walks against two pitchers that have been pretty darn good this year and Sir Anthony Dominguez and Aaron Nola. Leadoff man on and a bunt opportunity here for Kenta. Lays it down nicely. Maeda advances Verdugo into scoring position. One away here in the fifth. It's a great bump by Kenta Maeda. Just the way he deadened the ball was just perfect. Nice. He's got the bat at the top of the strike zone. He's got a great angle. That was perfect execution, perfect form. Murray Wills would be proud. Yeah. Still has his bunting station at spring training. Ori often around in Glendale during spring training, and but he always enjoys bumping into him, whether that's through a bunting drill or in the cafeteria. Runner at second with one out, and Jock Peterson takes a strike. Now the Dodgers, by the way, are second best in the National League this year. And percentage of the time that they successfully lay one down. I think it's similar to hitting with runners in scoring position where it bums you out so much when it doesn't work that everybody thinks the team's numbers are worse than they actually are. And that's not just the Dodgers, that's any team. Because remember the bad ones a whole lot more than you do when they lay it down when you're saying, well, he did what he should do. But it's also good when you when you are successful and you are ranking that high in execution. It's the little things that matter. Two balls and a strike on Peterson. Nola pitches. Peterson cuts and misses two and two. Stay alive. We've seen that more and more for from Jock this this year. Really getting that two more of a two strike approach than we've seen in the years past, where it was just the same swing no matter what the count is. But 
saw that yesterday and for sure against Dominguez. We really just shortened up and went the other way. Got a nice base hit. Oh, a shortstop. Another 2 2. And he's worked it full. You know, he has the lowest strikeout rate on the Dodgers. That's great. Hey, we used to have the highest one. You're right. Just a few years ago. And for him to really make a conscious effort and to reduce that. And it shows you it's been noticeable. Verdugo's is second with one out, and another pitch comes home. Peterson pops it up down the line. Franco giving it a nice effort, but won't get there. Now Peterson, as a rookie, no mark, struck out. 29% of the time. League average is 22% of the time. As a rookie, he was 29%. This year, he's 15%. So he's gone from 7% more than league average to 7% less than league average as far as strikeouts. Is the league average still 22% this year, or has that gone up? It's probably Since a little higher than it right, was right. three years <laughs> yeah. ago. It's been going up for a decade. Here comes another 3 2 pitch. Peterson pops it foul again. And the reason I say that that will even make his the fact that it's gone down even that much, and especially this year, more impressive. This year, where we're the first time in baseball seeing more strikeouts than hits in the majors. Ever. Yeah. Well, in this climate, makes him even more of a standout in what he's done. This would be the ninth pitch from Aaron Nola. And a 2 0 game in the fifth. Jack Peterson fouls it again. This refuses to go down against a guy who's top five in the league in strikeouts. Just missed it, because, and that was the ball. The hitter after you were seeing so many pitches, and you fouled off. You fouled off some tough pitches too to stay alive. You get the one that's in the middle. You're like, oh, fouled that one off too. You gotta still stay in there. Battle. His ninth inning hit last night came on the eighth pitch against the flame throwing Sir Anthony Dominguez. This would be the tenth pitch. And he hits a fly ball to left center field. Hoskins back on it. Still going to the track. Over his head and off the wall. Here comes Verdugo. No throw. Jock Peterson with a double off of the wall on the tenth pitch against Aaron Nola. Jock Peterson, his last three hits have been impressive. Starting with yesterday, as we keep talking about that ninth inning and how critical and clutch that hit was. And then his base hit beginning of this game going the other way. And it was, say, was that ninth pitch of that bat staying inside and going the other way and driving that. And up comes Machado with an RBI opportunity. Wouldn't you say these, you, know, you, you said the last three hits, but it's really the second half so far. This is as impressive of a stretch for Jack Peterson. You, know, you put aside what he did when he came to the majors and was homer in every time he was up there. But as far as approach oh, and yeah. process? No, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. I was just thinking about the last three hits only because where they sure. were going and you've seen them. But you're, no, you're exactly right. It, it hasn't just been those. It's been. We've noticed that over the second half, and we've seen just like we were just talking about. His approach has been better, reducing the strikeouts over the course of the season. Tails in for a strike on Machado. Then yeah. it goes back, you know, that double right there, that RBI double he has, goes back, and good job by Kenta Maeda for get executing the sack butt. Mm -hmm. The little things. Oh, 
too. The home runs are great. Home runs are fun. They lead the league in homers. But as we often talk about, you get into October. These are the kinds of pitchers you're going to face. You're not going to hit too many homers against guys like Aaron Nola, and so doing those little things become magnified. Nola was able to get Machado to chase a curveball his first time. Here he leaves a fastball out, and it's two and two. Machado popped out into short center field his next time up. Trying to extend that on base streak to 24 games. Nola's 2 2. Machado swings and it's a fly ball to center field. Herrera's back with room shy of the warning track. At the third goes Peterson, two out. For Muncie. Machado just got that off the end of the bat. Still hit that deep enough, deep enough so Jock Peterson can tag and go to third. I say that because we've already seen the Dodgers benefit from having a guy at third base in this game, and Jock, and it's same man Jock scoring on a wild pitch. A couple big runs in this series on wild pitches. Dodgers took the lead in the ninth on one last night. Just barely up on Muncie for ball one. Max is 0 for 2 on this 1 0. Swings and misses at a change up that evens the count. Dodgers with these three runs on five hits and two walks against Nola. Phillies have had just one base runner over four scoreless innings for Kenta Maeda. Strike two. Takes it in the dirt. Count goes to two and two. And all his next pitch will be his 90th. And for a guy who's given up zero or one run in more than half of his starts, this is an outlier here. Andrew's getting three against him over the first five. Is 2 2. It's fouled off. Nice catch up there. I didn't see it, but I wouldn't imagine they cheer like that if it wasn't. <laughs> that was a nice catch. It's Adam Morgan getting ready. Young man brings his baseball glove to the game. Sitting in the only third deck. 
Makes a nice catch. Oh, he's going, yeah, you got to bring your baseball glove to the game. Fly to left field. Reese Hoskins is there, and that'll do it for the Dodgers in the fifth. But they get one more. Peterson with a 10 pitch at bat, Kemp with an RBI double. We go to the bottom of the fifth halfway home in this one Joe and Nomar and he gave up a hit and it's such a bummer because he's got no hit stuff doesn't he? Yeah I mean Kenta Ma Maeda right now looks great up there on the mound control of his pitches having great command with that fastball hitting every corner whether it's up whether it's down outside inside his slider late break great sh sharp tight break on the slider his change up has been outstanding. Getting ahead early with the curveball. Just a great mix. Pitching with conviction. Dave Roberts always talks about with Kenta Maeda. Ground ball, diving stop by Hernandez, and they get the out. Are you kidding me? Kike Hernandez shifted to the left side of the infield. A wonder that he's even able to get to the ball, let alone make a throw from his knees. Kike already made a tremendous play on a ball that takes a weird hop over at second base. This one, once again, showing off the athleticism, laying out and then throwing from his knees, and your pitcher appreciates it. When you have your pitcher throwing strikes the way Kenta Maeda has been and attacking the zone, you get plays like that made behind you because your defense is on its toes and ready. They're not on their heels, they're not going, oh, gosh. There's ball after ball or there's a walk here. You will know he's going to get the ball. He's going to pound the zone. You're waiting to make plays and he made an outstanding one. The heck of a dig by Muncie yeah. too off of bounds. All around. Nothing and one on Nick Williams. A curve makes it 0 and 2. Ball one. Uh, the 24 year old Nick Williams mentioned earlier that he started the season in more of a platoon with Aaron Altair. 
was unhappy with the amount of playing time that he got at that point and went publicly and blamed quote the computers that make the lineup. That ball's crushed and it gets the Phillies on the board. Third time that he's homered against Kenta Maeda. 12th of the season. 3 1. Well, Nick Williams seems to see Kenta Maeda well. And this is one of the very few mistakes we have seen Kenta Maeda make today. You saw where that pitch landed. We talked about, yeah, he has missed some of his targets, but he's had good misses. That one was a miss over the middle of the plate, and he knew it. He's been so much better this year, limiting the damage via home runs. It's only the seventh that he's given up. But it makes it a 3-1 game here in the fifth. Just barely missed with a curve to Valentin. Go back home 1 0. Ball 2. That's in there, 2 and 1. Change jump two and two. Strikeout number five for Kenta Maeda. Four of the five have come on that changeup. And it's really good that after you just gave up a home run on that changeup where you missed your spot, but still coming back, having confidence to throw it again, get that swing and miss, and to be able to execute it that well again. That tells you, okay, he knew he made a mistake, but he still has the feel for it and trust that he can get back to where it was. And so two out with the bases empty. It's the eight hitter Jorge Alfaro. A little too much of the plate with that one, but Alfaro hits it foul. Young catcher for the Phillies. It is first opening day roster this year. 25 years old out of Columbia. Signed by the Texas Rangers, and then like a lot of guys in this Phillies organization now, came over in a a trade that was part of this rebuild. It was acquired in the Cole Hamels deal. Another guy that came over in that trade is the man who homered in this inning, Nick Williams. That's uh, strike two. Another fastball, another foul ball. Work on the top of the zone on Alfaro, where we saw Kenley Jansen go against him to finish the game last night. Alfaro, one of the highest strikeout rates in baseball, and one of the highest chase rates on pitches up to help get him to that number. And that's where Grandal and Maeda are attacking. Another 0-2. This time the changeup, and he follows the home run with back-to-back -back K's.
Ball has been built for baseball. Home runs in both games in this series, continuing his torrid pace in July. And what I really like is not only just the swing, but where the balls are going. But I mean, he's staying in the middle of the field. He's not trying to pull it. He's staying with the pitches. He's recognizing pitches unbelievably. Looking to stay hot. Facing a new pitcher, it's Adam Morgan. Left hander out of the Phillies bullpen. How about this, Nomar? So Morgan is a converted starter. He's also the last left handed pitcher to start a game for the Phillies, which isn't that big of a deal until you realize that the last time he started was September of 2016. Phillies haven't had a left hander make a start in almost two full years. First pitch is ball one. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that that year. I was like, oh, what are you say since last year? <laughs> no. Go back a little further. Actually going to call up a left-hander to start on Thursday. Left-hander with a great name, Ranger Suarez. Be the first left-handed starter for the Phillies since Morgan started in September of 16. Two balls, no strikes. Two on one. And just misses Grandall in the driver's seat. Three balls and a strike. This is his wife Heather with him on this trip. Her young son Yasmani Jr. will turn one in October. Full count. Slide to right center field. Yasmani Grandal sends another drive out of the yard. Second home run of the night. Third of the series. He can't be stopped right now. You bring in the lefty Morgan because he's been so effective against left handed hitters. You want to turn Yasmani Grandal better from the left side than he is from the right side. But right now, it really doesn't matter what side he is on right now. He is swinging the bat well as we look at the Volkswagen replay. I talked about his home runs where they were staying in the middle of the field. Well, he's staying opposite, middle of the field, even from the right side. It's his 16th total home run, his first as a right handed hitter. Ball one on Chris Taylor. Well, that's when you know you're seeing it, huh? Ball on a strike. He told you coming into the game, Grandall was leading baseball and on base percentage in July. He was right there with the leaders in slugging. After this performance, good chance he's going to be leading baseball and on base, slugging, and by virtue of that, OPS as well in this month of July. Dodger fans know what Yasmani Grandall can do for the team when he's right. Put the team on his back. Not a team that necessarily needs that with the depth of lineup has. And they're certainly not going to complain when he enters one of these stretches that he currently is. Two and two.
Now Taylor with a fly ball to left, but hooked it off the end of the barrel some, and Hoskins squeezes it for out number one. Here's Bellinger. Strike one. Strike two. A great story out of uh, Cincinnati last last night. I don't know if you saw what Daniel Ponce de Leon, the St. Louis Cardinals, did. No, I, I just knew he was pitching, uh -huh. which says a lot. Bellinger down on strikes. Yeah, he was hit in the head by a line drive 14 months ago. Didn't just knock him out of the game, but it was life threatening. Doctors weren't sure when they went in for the surgery as they tried to stop bleeding in his brain. If there wasn't even a question, is he going to be on a mound again? It was, is this going to be it? They were able to save his life. 14 months later, makes his major league debut last night for the Cardinals and throws seven no hit innings. Here's Hernandez with two out. Morgan comes home and Hernandez takes ball one. That's impressive. I mean, he was in Cincinnati. So just imagine the ovation he's going to get when he oh, comes yeah. back home. And, oh, that's great. Well, I hate to break it to you, but how about this? He got sent back down no. today. Oh, no. <laughs> He'll be back. 2 0. Seven shutout innings. Seven no hit, no hit innings. El Bencho. Yeah. <laughs> He was taken out after those seven innings because of a high pitch count. Fifth pitcher in baseball history to take a no hitter through seven in his major league debut. Two and one. The guy to do it before him. Stripling. Got it. Who also was removed because of the pitch count. On a 2 1, Hernandez is out in front of a change, and the count evens up. Cardinals actually lost that game 2 1. Still two balls, two strikes on Hernandez, who's 0 for 2 tonight. It's fly to center and line to right. Three and two. Hernandez reaches out, pokes one to second. Hernandez, Kike Hernandez to Cesar Hernandez, and the inning is over. But it begins with another long home run from Yasmani Grandal, his second of the night, his first of the season from the right side.
Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Dodgers with a 4-1 lead to the bottom of the sixth. We go down to Alana. All right, guys, thanks very much. Congratulations are in order to Dodgers outfielder Matt Kemp. He was named the winner of the for the Dodgers for the Heart and Hustle Award for the 2018 season. It's basically an award that demonstrates the passion for the game of baseball and best embodies the values, spirit, and traditions of the game. The overall winner, because there, there's 30 guys that are announced from, of course, each club, is going to be announced on November 8th in New York of this season for some previous winners that you can see there. But congratulations, Matt, for the Heart and Hustle Award. Very cool. Thank you, Alana. Sandra Knapp pinch hits to start this sixth inning and takes ball one from Maeda. So it's an all star. It's the Heart and Hustle Award. If he keeps doing what he's been doing, he's going to be in the MVP conversation as this year wears on. One and one. Most definitely. We were just talking about his MVP season. We were just in Milwaukee in his last series, and what a tremendous season that was. And I said, I totally thought he deserved it right out of the gate. I like how you called it his MVP season. His MVP season, where he just happened to not quite win it. But yeah, I like calling it an MVP season still, 2011. Only two hits against Kenta Maeda in this one. Two balls and two strikes on Knapp. Lone run came on a Nick Williams homer. After Knapp, top of the order, Hernandez and Hoskins. Ground ball to second. Kika Hernandez, one out. Well, the 27 season was memorable for, for all star pitcher Alex Wood, and now you can add him to your Dodger bobblehead collection. On July 31st, when the Dodgers host the Milwaukee Brewers at 710, the first 40,000 fans will receive an Alex Wood bobblehead presented by Emirates. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. So we told you Daniel Ponce de Leon and his. Uh, First major league start last night had seven no hit innings for the Cardinals. Tonight, a guy named Austin Gomber is making his first career major league start for the Cardinals. Took a no hitter into the seventh. That strike one on Hernandez. It was just broken up with one out in the seventh by Joey Votto. <laughs> Don't worry, El Bencho for you too. You gave one up. <laughs> he sent the guy who. Didn't give up a hit down. What do you think you're going? You're going to double a, a buddy. Gave up a hit to Joey Votto. What do you think you're going? <laughs> no balls, two strikes. Hoskins on deck in a 4 1 game. Go oh, to ball one. Got him swinging. Kenta Maeda with his seven strikeout of the night. Two away in the six. Kenta Maeda once again. That was the changeup. This. Talking about all night how much the bottom has been falling out of that changeup. Really just one mistake on that changeup. Williams ended up hitting a home run on it, but outside of that, it has been outstanding. 
So the base is empty for Hoskins which is how you want to face him with the way that he's swinging it drives this ball into right center. Bellinger able to range to it to hold him to a single. Good job by Cody Bellinger getting to that ball cutting it off in the gap and then as he's cutting it off showing off the athleticism and throwing it in quickly to make sure you keep him to a single. See Cody here going in the gap right when he gets it just getting it in as quick as he can hitting the cutoff man. A couple home run derby guys having a conversation over there Hoskins and Muncie. Two gone in the sixth. This Herrera comes up. First base runner for the Phillies tonight was on a Herrera single with two out in the fourth. Right, to try to quick pitch him. And Herrera slapped at the left center. Swings wildly, strike one. Did that in his last step back. Same thing at the curve ball. Helmet fell off. Cuts one inside, one ball, one strike. Broken bat flare. Chris Taylor's waiting for it. And Kentamite is through six innings with a 4 1 lead. Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Infinity and Power the Drive and by Energy Upgrade California. Drew Anderson comes into the game for the Phillies with the Dodgers in front 4 1 in the seven. This is outing number two this season for Anderson, who started on July 8th and gave up four runs over five innings. Dodgers looking to try to tack on some more insurance runs. We're going to get one run at a time here. It's all they need to do here. Alex Verdugo doing an excellent job the last couple of at bats, finding a way to get on. Leading off the fifth, getting a walk, and end up coming around to score. 
Uh, three plate appearances since he was caught up yesterday and he's walked in all three. Here he takes strike one. So there are reports out there that the Yankees have acquired Zach Britton from the Baltimore Orioles. It's considered the top relief arm available. At least since Brad Hand has gone to Cleveland. You could argue either side of that hand or Britain who's the better guy. So the Yankees bolstering what is already one of the best bullpens in baseball. Oh two. That's foul. Front goes over. Not going to get there. You know what the Yankees really need is starting pitching. But there just isn't any starting pitching available out there. And so you're seeing teams like the Yankees in this case try to pick up those 27 outs that you need in a game just a little bit differently than tradition. Working it from the back end. I mean, the Yankees are obviously a team contending to be in the postseason. They're probably thinking if we bolster that the way you've seen the way bullpens have been used more and more in the postseason, going to them earlier. You're going, all right, well, do we have enough? Maybe starting pitching. You don't really need to carry that many starters in the post as much as the postseason. Well, you have to get there, but <laughs> if there's nothing available, you're going all right. Well, you got to think. We we're looking at Cole Hamels as being probably the best, most truly available starting pitcher that's being fouled, and it stays at 1 2. And Hamels in the month of July has an ERA above 10. Jay Happ in Toronto, he's not been very good lately. But a bunch of good relief arms out there. It's all about getting 27 outs, whether those come from the starter or handful of relievers. Verdugo digs it out, sends a high fly ball to Williams and right. One away in the seventh. Maeda hit for himself. It's only thrown 78 pitches. Shows Bunn takes a strike. He's got at least another inning in there. <laughs> Looks like he's mad. I don't know if he's mad that he didn't try to bunt that and it was down the middle or that he was maybe acting like he bunted rather than that swinging at a pitch down the middle. If you saw him try to attack Nola, swinging at the first pitch, his first at bat. That was the one, Kenta. Fly to center and Herrera. Two outs. 4 1 Dodgers in the seventh. Back to the top of the order for Jack Peterson. His last time up was as impressive of a battle and finished to a battle as you're going to see. Against the guy second in the league in ERA, second in the league in wins, works a 10 pitch at bat, winds up doubling off of the wall and left. First pitch curve misses 1 0. Grounded the second. Cesar Hernandez picks it off. And that's a 1 2 3 inning for Drew Anderson. We stretch in Philadelphia with the Dodgers in front 4 1.
Score brought to you by Kona Brewing Company takes a look at Kenta Maeda's line. Six innings, one run, and out of those seven strikeouts, he's got Omar six have come off the chain. Uh, Kenta Maeda has looked outstanding today. Really just great command of all of his pitches, mixing them up, no pattern whatsoever, keeping the hitters off balance, lots of swings and misses. And just hasn't given an at bat with a runner in scoring position yet today. Blown run came on a Nick Williams home run in the fifth. Here he'll face the heart of the order Santana Franco and Williams. Santana is over two He's twice grounded out to second. They like grounded out to short right with the way they have him position. Kike Hernandez has been roving out there like a free safety for the infield. Shoots one left side that Machado can't get to, and Santana is able to beat the shift this time for a leadoff single. When you're pitching as well as Kenta Maeda has been all game. Those are the ones that frustrate you because they're like, it's not hit very hard. It's off the end of the bat, makes his pitch, but just finds a way to find the hole. Billy's trying to mount something here in the seventh. It is pitch count only at 80. A chance to get really deep into this game. The 4 1 lead as the Dodgers try to clinch another series win. Maeda pitches. Franco swings and misses. Oh, for two tonight after his two home run game last night. That's inside one and one. Change to the knees, strike two. He's now thrown 22 change-ups tonight, 19 of them for strikes. You can come back right there with the same pitch again, because those are the ones where you can get the ground ball and possibly get that double play ball. One two goes back to it. It's dug out left center and will bounce off the wall. That is a double for Franco to bring home Santana and it's four two in the seventh. Well, he does go back to it again. Goes back down with the changeup. And it's down in the zone. You see Yasmani Grandal. He wanted it low, wanted it in the dirt. Still catches the bottom part of the zone. Sometimes you got to tip your hat to the hitter. Franco did a good job staying on that ball. That's been a pitch he even missed earlier in the at bat. Made the adjustment, stayed on it, and drove it to left center. First hit of the night for the Phillies against a changeup. And now a guy that homered against Maeda his last time comes up representing the tying run. Could be a 
playoff preview first place Dodgers and first place Phillies engaged in another good one after the Dodgers came from behind last night to win seven six. They lead this one four two. Flared into center. Bellinger's there, and on one pitch, he gets Williams. Well, in mentioning that both these teams are in first place, worth mentioning that the Braves, a team the Phillies came into the night tied with, lost earlier. The Diamondbacks, meanwhile, have a 3 0 lead on the Cubs in the fifth inning at Wrigley. It is so good in these situations all year. It's Valentin who's gone down twice on change ups. Alexander. Ball one. Slide to right center. Verdugo. Two out. Kenta Maeda is doing everything he can to just try to minimize the damage so far. Giving up one run in this inning. He's been outstanding this entire game. Doing what a lot of the start, there's quite a few starting pitchers on this Dodger staff that have been so effective with runners in scoring position, keeping the batting average against in those situations, really buckling down when they get someone on. Kenta Maeda is no different. He's been really effective in those situations. Yeah, they're one of the best staffs in baseball in those situations. Alfaro's the hitter in a 4 2 game in the seventh, takes ball one. Oh, for two tonight with a pair of K's. Scott Kingery is in the on deck circle with a pitcher's spot due next. Here comes a 1 0, and Alfaro swings, hammers a ball to right center to tie the game. was hit a long way as Monty Grandel wanting to get that fastball up in the zone that was not up in the zone that was in the middle part of the zone. Now Paul I mean, he crushes that ball to right center. Bronco knew it. Alfaro knew it. Ada knew it. Everybody knew it right off the bat. So for the second night in a row the Phillies ride the long ball and a come back to tie it. Did it against Stripling in the fifth yesterday. They do it against Maeda here in the seventh tonight. Kingery will pinch it. Tied at four. Strike one. Of the seventh of the season for Jorge Alfaro. Other than two, but man, you are right. There was no doubt about that one.
was hit 446 feet the other way. The 0 2. Ball one. They hit that into the Dodger bullpen. And they hear they have a two tiered bullpen out there in right center. Very rarely is the. Rarely is a visiting bullpen getting the ball hit to them from a right handed hitter. If exit velocity is your thing, 114 miles per hour off of the bat. Statcast AI powered by AWS gives you a look at all those details. Fitting hits in front of the sign that says power. Foul. I think if he hits the power sign on the fly, he wins that amount. 147 million and retires on the spot. What about the mega millions on the right? Yeah, that one. He would he would have missed. And like that one, then you should put that one a little bit farther away. Right. Can't just put it next to it. Two balls, two strikes on Kingery. Brand new game in Philly. Two two. Line to short and caught by Taylor. But the Phillies have tied it. A double from Franco. A homer from Alfaro. To the eighth we go. Four four. Sportsnet Dodgers presented by your Southern California Ford dealers. All right, thanks, Joe. What a night for Yasmani Grandal. He's hitting 444 here in July now with five home runs, but it's a new game, Ned. Got a new ball game now. Philadelphia's come back strong. Dodgers trying to win another series on the road. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. Victor Arano comes on to this tie game in the eighth. Former Dodger farmhand that came here in the same trade that brought Jess Mel Valentin. A couple of years ago, and opponents just hit opponents just hitting 215 off on this this year. So 
23 years old out of Mexico, ready to face the heart of the Dodger order, Machado, Muncy, and Grandall. A light rain starting to fall again. Dodgers looking for a repeat of last night where they pulled it out late. Strike one on Manny, who is 0 for 3 so far. And likely one of his final opportunities to extend the 23 game on base streak. It's always been good late in games, Machado has. A year ago, he hit three walk off home runs. It's more than anybody in the American League. Looking for his first homer as a Dodger. Can't lay off that fastball, and he's behind one and two. Fouled off. You see him jumping there. He knew that was the pitch. I was about looking for his first home run as a Dodger. That was a pitch. It was a breaking ball. The right in the middle of the plate just misses it. His timing was there. He set back on it. Hit 24 of them for Baltimore in the first half. Put him top 10 in the American League. He's leading off the eighth in a tie game. And it's in a chopper to short for Valentin. One gone. So Machado's 0 for 4 tonight, and here's Max Muncy. Down the left field line. It's towards the foul pole, and Max Muncy hits it just foul. He thought that he'd gotten it and that it was staying fair, but it fades just outside the pole for strike one. Off the bat, I thought he got it. I was going, that's going to stay fair for him, especially as far as that carrying. It didn't look like it was just mishit where it was just slicing. They're going to have another look at it. Uh, I don't think there's any question that right. it was foul. Should be really quick. Should be really quick on that and say, nope, foul. Get back to playing. And they are. Went up there with a plan and nearly executed it to put the Dodgers right back in front. There's an umpire's review, by the way. Just to be sure. So an 0 on 1 count. Uh, he pops this one in foul ground, and it'll reach the seats 0 2. We talk about Machado and doing a lot of his damage late in games. Not that Muncie's. Been bad late in games. It's just the majority of his damage has come early. 14 of his 23 home runs have come in the first three innings. Oh, two. Another foul. 20 of his 23 home runs this year have been solo shots. And 
Matt Kemp available off Dave Roberts bench tonight. Loose for potential opportunity. Muncie turns on this one. Right field and deep. Williams back to the track. He's going to have room for out number two. A couple of near misses for Muncie. With two out, here comes Grandall, and we look at our top tier plays of the game brought to you by Arco. He's gone deep twice already tonight. Twice from both sides of the plate. Staying to right center on both of them. Seen the ball extremely well. Looking to see if he can make it three. Took a strike. It's the fourth time in his career that he's homered from both sides of the plate in the same game. Last time that he did it was opening day last year. It's behind here, 0 and 2. Looking for a one, two, three, eight. He's got it. Yeah, Monty didn't like this one, and we know he's been sweet seeing the ball extremely well. Pitch cast have it just on the outer half. It was close. Last night, four and a third, and the only base runner came on the home run against Jansen to open the night. And we said in the begin beginning of this game that really the key to the yesterday's victory was that bullpen. The bullpen doing just an outstanding job to allow the offense to come back and get that victory. Nobody's been better than this guy who pitched a scoreless inning as part of that four and a third last night. Scott Alexander, back to back nights of work. Dave Roberts using him for the eighth and using him for the top of the Phillies order. It's Hernandez, Hoskins, and Herrera. Alexander has not given up a run in his 10 outings in July. And since coming back from AAA at the beginning of May, he's got a 210 earned run average. Hernandez 0 for 3. Alexander starts his night with ball one. A challenge for Alexander. The reason I'm saying it's a challenge because you're now just facing a lineup that has momentum on their side. I and mean, after that last inning, when they were down by three, they ended up scoring three. Got a big home home run.
tie the game and then you got somebody coming out of the bullpen and does his job getting a one two three inning to get them back into the dugout to go swing the bat early so he's got to have try to have one of those quick innings to get his offense to get the momentum back on the Dodger side. Top ground ball rate in baseball produces one here. Manny Machado throws Hernandez out. Dodger fans be at Dodger Stadium on Monday July 30th and welcome Manny Machado to Los Angeles when the Dodgers return home to face the Milwaukee Brewers in a four game series. Don't miss the excitement of Machado's debut at home. Purchase your tickets today at Dodgers.com slash tickets. Be a lot of fun. It'll have logged 10 games by then. One more here tomorrow which is an early game. And the Dodgers head to Atlanta for four before the homestand opens Monday night. Good matchup here. Alexander against Hoskins. And a line drive caught it short by Taylor. Two up, two down. Let's take a look at our Dodgers calendar we're talking about. Brought to you by Nissan. 9.30 tomorrow morning. Breakfast in baseball. And then in Atlanta, they'll play three night games. And getaway day Sunday. Get back into Los Angeles later Sunday night. Get ready to welcome in the Brewers and the Astros. Tied in the eighth, and here's Herrera. Strike one as he buries that slider and Herrera cuts over it. We mentioned earlier tonight that it's been reported that Zach Britton is headed from the Orioles to the Yankees. Scott Alexander has been compared pretty favorably to Zach Britton in the way that his stuff profiles so that sinker reliance ground ball rate one ball one strike both left handed guys. One and two in baseball last year and sinker usage one and two in ground ball percentage. Well the Dodgers had interest in Britain in a way they already have him. Here comes his one one. Soft foul one and two. Scott would tell you that he's admired Zach Britton as he's, as he's become a Pretty much exclusively sinker ball guy. He's tried to follow his blueprint. Became that guy last year. Gave up a few hits on his slider during spring training. Complained to a teammate that it seemed like every time he threw an off speed pitch, it got hit. So the teammate said, Well, why don't you just stop throwing them? Throw the sinker all the time. The one two got him swinging one two three eight inning for Scott Alexander on eight pitches sending this game to the ninth tied at four.
Try the new queso loaded double queso quesadilla only at El Pollo Loco, fresh from the grill. To the ninth inning we go in Philadelphia. Three for the Phillies against Maeda in the seventh to tie it. And Victor Arano out there for his second inning of work. Lived on the edge a little bit in the eighth inning. Max Muncie twice almost homering, just outside the foul pole and left, and then flying out to the wall and right. The Dodgers, Nomar, sent Taylor, Bellinger, and Hernandez up there. Well, in last night's game, the Dodgers did an excellent job in the ninth inning to produce a run, especially starting off with the leadoff man, getting on base with a walk. Got some hits, bases loaded, clutch hitting. Looking to do the same right here in this inning. We talked about the bullpen and what Scott Alexander had to do. Well, he did his job. He had a quick inning and got the offense back into the dugout so they can go out there and try to produce a run. Taylor took ball one low, now takes ball two away. It was a walk that opened the ninth inning last night when there was a similar picture in that bullpen with Jansen and another. It was Jansen and Floro last night. Jansen and Chagua tonight. The 2 0. Strike one. So we want Utley chant. They're starting. And you know what? You just might get him. This gets to Pika Hernandez with Arano still in. That rides inside. Ball three. A couple of borderline pitches have gone against Arano. Taylor starting the ninth. He's got a full count. Chris is 0 for 3 tonight. Got a modest six game hitting streak going. He's driven in more runs than anybody in the National League in July. Here he's just trying to set the table on a 3 2. He fouls it off. Payoff again. Foul again. Good job by CT to foul that ball off. That was a good pitch by Rano. The bottom of the zone, off speed, stay alive. Third straight, 3 2. Got it. All plate umpire Tom Hallian going about six inches off of the plate according to pitch cast to ring Taylor up. Well, we saw the last inning because Money Grandal didn't like the call. And this one, and that one on Yasmani might have caught the corner according to pitch cast, but this one looked like it was off the plate. And so Faro looked like he did the job that he was supposed to do to try to frame that and bring that back in. Big call instead of the leadoff man on one out base is empty Bellinger the hitter taking strike one. Cody tonight is one for three He's one for eight in this series. Strike two. Is on deck. As Arano readies for this 0 2 pitch. Ball one. Bellinger. Takes ball two. This couple have gone away from Arano and not been 
It's icing enough for Bellinger to offer. Here comes a 2 2. Line drive to center field, but right at Herrera. Best we've seen Bellinger square a ball up over the last few days. It's right out the center fielder, two out. Just unlucky. It's a pitch he could handle. Puts a, puts a nice swing on it. And right now, Kike coming to the plate, and you have the fans booing because they were hoping they'd get a chance to see Chase Utley pinch hit here. Chase is hanging out back there ready to go if Dave Roberts calls on him. And looking for the thunder that Kike can bring here with his career high 17 home runs this year. He's ahead one ball no strikes. Perhaps he makes that move if Bellinger doubles mm -hmm. was in scoring position. He'll keep Utley in his back pocket for now. The 1 0. Ball 2. Santana, Franco, and Williams do up for the Phillies in the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers led this game 4 1 in the seventh. Lined up the middle on a bounce. Cesar Hernandez to finish a 1 2 3 ninth for Victor Arano. Retires all six that he faces. JT pitched a 1 2 3 inning last night. In fact, each of his last four outings, he's been perfect. He was part of that group last night that was just outstanding coming out of the bullpen, putting up the zeros, asking him to do it again. Alexander did it last night, did it once again today, had a quick inning. Chagua trying to do the same thing. Won't be easy with Santana, Franco, and Williams coming up. Their home run totals this season 15, 15, and 12. For Williams, number 12 came earlier tonight. Got a whole bunch of former Dodger farmhands coming at you in this one. Valentin, who's playing short. Arano, who pitched the last two innings. And a little more famously, Carlos Santana. Formerly one of the top prospects in the system. Way back, more than a decade ago. About 32 years old in his ninth big league year. First one here with the Phillies. And set to lead things off in a tie game in the ninth. Tailing fastball, strike one.
stroke to left center field. That ball splits the gap. And the winning run is in scoring position to open the ninth for the Phillies. Well, Santana puts a good swing on this pitch, tailing away. He takes the ball in the inner half for a strike. This one he stays on at 97 going on the outer half. Doesn't pull off, drives it, the left center gap. And now it's Michael Franco, who is the last guy you think of when you're thinking about bunting. Let's see what Gabe Kapler does here. I think he's letting him swing and have a conf confidence in him that he can possibly stay inside the ball and try to go the other way. No signs of bunt. Swings away and misses. Strike one. Franco drove from a run with the double his last time. The Phillies' hottest hitter over the last month. Trying to drive home the guy whose mentorship has helped turn his career around in recent months. Comes in on one pitch. Good stop by Grandall. Well, with the left handed batty Nick Williams on deck. Zach Roskop appears ready to go. Jaguar trying to handle Franco. Just slow ball two. Good pitch right there. Just didn't get the call. I saw some borderline pitches against the Dodgers that saw some that looked more off the plate. Tom Hallian called it. We saw that especially against Chris Taylor. So like, well, not getting that one. It's two and one in Franco. Hits one. Foul. And it's two and two. That close. I don't know if the Phillies are having to look at it and as we have a look at it right now. And that was foul. It was a proper call. Good call. Brian Blackney right on it. Lead off double, Carlos Santana. 4 4 ninth inning. Chuck Juan, the Dodgers now trying to pull a magic act to get out of this one. Against the Phillies team trying to add to its come from behind win total among the leaders in all of baseball. The 2 2. A big bouncer that sends Santana back to the bag. Taylor to first for out number one. Daniel Hudson getting ready. Dave Roberts coming out to bring out Roscoe. So Chagua gives up the double to Santana, but he's able to win the battle with Franco. And for the left handed batting Williams, Roscoe will come on, tied it for him tonight.
Yeah, you notice pattern here. Dave Roberts really just using Zach Roska for that lefty on lefty matchup. Just to get that one big out. Nick Williams, pretty even splits as far as the average goes. All of his power has come against right handed pitching. Wouldn't take power here to win the game for the Phillies. Carlos Santana started this inning with a double against Chagua. And after Franco grounds out to short, it's Williams with one out. Flip foul. Count evens one ball and one strike. Williams has a home run tonight against Maeda. First Phillies run of the game. It came in the fifth. They tied in the seventh on a two run home run from Jorge Alfaro. Rosk up to Williams with a 1 1. Cued foul, strike two. It's a switch hitting Valentin on deck. It'll be interesting to see what route Dave Roberts goes. If he wants Valentin to bat right handed with Ross Cup, or if he makes another move and brings on Hudson. The one two. Top foul. But Dave Roberts wants to make that decision. Yeah. That would mean the game's still going. Valentin, by the way, much better against left-handed pitching. So, can assume that the move would be to Hudson if Ross Cup can get Williams for the game on the line in the ninth. The one-two, ball two. And all able to keep it in the vicinity, and Santana hangs on at second. Good job by Grandal just knocking that down. Good job, but that's one where he got lucky that he was able to knock it down. That was a good job. He just got four. He was lucky. What do they say? Better to be lucky than good sometimes. Yep. He's been both tonight. A couple home runs at the plate. 2 2. Full count. In a situation where a walk wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Santana at second, one out in the ninth. Ross Cup delivers 3 2, and that's ball four to put him at first and second. Here comes Dave Roberts. And here comes Daniel Hudson.
last night's game to face Valentin, then it to be Alfaro, tied at four with runners at first and second and one out. Well, it wasn't exactly the same pattern that from last night's game as far as the usage of the bullpen by Dave Roberts, but it's the same people that he's bringing in. Last night, he started off with Roscoe, Chagua, Hudson, Alexander, and then eventually closing it out with Jansen. This one, Alexander, Chagua, Roscoe, and Hudson now to do the job. Valentin tonight is 0 for 3. And this is why Dave Roberts decided to go to Hudson instead of give Roscoe another batter. Forces him to flip around and bat from his weaker side. Santana started this inning with a double against Chagua. Franco grounded out to short. Unable to advance Santana. And after the first walk of the night, Williams is at first as Hudson deals. One ball and no strikes. Strike one. This is a game that looked like the Dodgers were going to cruise in. We're going to ride Kent to Maeda. They didn't give up a base runner until there were two out in the fourth. They given up just one run to the point where there were six and a third on his line, but there's three runs in the seventh to tie it. And now the Dodgers just trying to get it into extras. Hudson's 1 1 pitch. Ball two. Right now it's just another situation they're battling here, trying to win this game, but it's just heartbreaking the way because Kenta Maeda was just going so well today. And really just that one inning, that seventh inning, up to that point, just giving up just three hits. Alfaro's two run shot tied it. He waits on deck as Hudson delivers 2 1 and gets strike two. Well, Valentin didn't like this call, but it was a good pitch by Hudson right there on the outside corner. Yeah, that arm side fastball command. Well, Hudson's been good, has been spot on. Two on, one out, tie game in the ninth. The 2 2. Line drive, caught it short by Taylor. Santana's back to the bag, but there are two out, and Santana's still at second. Good scouting report, good positioning. That ball was driven right how you're supposed to, right back up the middle. That's right where CT3 is. Hoping to maybe get, see if they can get Santana off just a little bit for a double play. Good read by Santana. Really easy to be leaning the other way because you are the winning run to try to get a good jump. Ball hit that hard. That's knowing before that ball is hit where guys are playing behind you. That's the veteran out there who's still standing there despite leading this inning off with a double. It's up to Alfaro, who it's a ground ball to third that Machado takes to the bag, and the Dodgers escape this ninth inning. To extra innings we go, tied at four in Philly.
First year of this stint with the Phillies. One of the big signings this offseason for Philadelphia is they invest a lot in that bullpen. And he'll face eight, nine, and one. Alex Verdugo to lead things off. We'll see where Dave Roberts goes with the nine spot. And then back to the top for Jock Peterson. Verdugo tonight is 0 for 1. He's looking for his first hit since returning yesterday. But he's walked three times. It was his leadoff walk in the ninth last night that set the table for the two runs that would. Be enough for the Dodgers to win at 7 6. Trying to set the tone here in the 10th. Well, the Dodgers have been retired the last nine batters in a row, so they're just looking to try to get some sort of momentum going. Matt Kemp, it appears, is going to bat second. Fans want to chase Utley. They're not going to get him. That's a jam shot at second. Hernandez, one pitch, one out. The Kemp was making his way to the on deck circle to take some practice cuts, get ready to go. And a little flare on the first pitch. Head on up there, big fella. You can actually go back even a little farther, Nomar, than the, the three consecutive one, two, three innings. Since the Grandall home run in the sixth, that's now 13 straight retired by Phillies pitching. That count pinch hitting and a tie game in the 10th. Taking ball one. And good in pretty much every role this season. That includes as a pinch hitter. He gets under it this time. Sky Scraper to right. Williams. On three pitches, Tommy Hunter has two outs. Boy, they're letting Dave Roberts hear it about not using Chase Sutley, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They hang around long enough, yeah. they'll see him at some point. I mean, they've been letting Dave Roberts know when they would see somebody coming out on deck. It's not just waiting till they're coming to the plate. Peterson, two for four. And a light rain, you can probably see beginning to fall. Jock fouls it hard off Tom Hallion. Mm. That hits him just square. Sometimes you see these balls that fell off and they might get a little bit of the catcher and then hit the umpire. That one did not. Sixty one year old Tom Hallion who's been doing it a long time. A New York native. Started umpiring when he was in college. Buddy of his asked him to help out the local softball fields, and he was hooked. We were talking about Yasmani Grandal's catcher's mask. We're yeah. having the, the little. Kind of shock absorbers in that. I think Tom Hallion's mask is the same way. Not that it matters, not that it's going to say, oh, it's going to take away some of that. You're still going to feel it, but it is definitely supposed to help a little bit.
Looks like Tom's going to tough it out. It's a well deserved hand from this crowd. Now he makes Jock laugh. He's okay. He says, you better swing the bat because I'm calling everything. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Just put it in play, though, yeah. Jock. <laughs> Nothing and one on Peterson. He flies one into left center field, slices its way down for a base hit. First base runner for the Dodgers since the sixth inning. A two out single from Jack Peterson. His third hit of the night. Now that gets Machado up there. Well, we've seen these Dodgers have some two out rallies since the All Star break in a few of these games. So they're looking for that right now, coming up big. They also know in this ballpark. We were talking about this ballpark where it has some idiosyncrasies out there, especially in the outfield. We've already seen Machado hit a triple, but there's gaps. Balls can bounce around to score a guy from first base, and the guy who can do that is Machado. So the outfield for the Phillies understandably deep. Not wanting anything to get into the gap. Machado hits one off the end of the bat to right. Williams recovers to catch it. And the inning is over. The Phillies bring up 9 1 and 2 in the bottom of the 10th, tied at 4. I'll tip hard off of the mass. Bottom of the tent, still tied at four. And the conveyor belt out of that bullpen continues as Eric Goodell comes on for the Dodgers. After they were able to combine to get out of that ninth inning after the leadoff double from Santana. Yep, going over there, Roscup, Hudson, getting the job done. And now it's up to Goodell with a clean inning. Dodgers finally getting a base runner. Since that home run from Grandal in the sixth inning on base. So trying to feel maybe something, a little bit of a momentum. So with Goodell have a quick inning here, but I'll tell you, they might be changing the umpires here. After saw Phil Cuzzy head down the tunnel towards the umpire locker room. They're going to play it safe, it looks like. Tom Halion will come out. And Cozzy will put that gear on. We're going to take a break. Back to Philly in a moment.
But home plate umpire Tom Hallion uh, took a foul tip off of the mask. He's going to leave the game. Phil cuzzy has gone back in there to change into his home plate umpiring gear. But he's still back there getting that on. And the rain beginning to fall, which becomes a whole other issue. Tied at four in the tenth. We're going to send you to another break and hopefully have action in just a moment. Behind the plate, I'm picturing like when you wake up late, you know, you, you oversleep your alarm and you got to hurry up and get dressed. That's what I'm picturing Phil Cousy like trying to hop into the pants and get the gear on and, and everything. And it, and it takes you longer because yeah. you keep missing, right. you know, your pant leg or especially when he's putting on the gear, the shin guards, the clips are mm -hmm. probably not Love clipping stuff. properly. And then you got the chest protector and it's a whole different shirt than you were wearing and different, different hat, pants and you got different shoes. So it takes a little while. This isn't good. It's rain. No, 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 it's not. Now it's, you know, at first when this inning first started, when they were warming up, it wasn't coming down quite as heavy. It was in the air. And now it's starting to pick up a little bit. Eric Goodell is warmed and ready to go. It's almost like you threw a very quick inning. And then a break and then ready to come back out. And the groundskeeper on the phone with Know, who's groundskeeper go on the phone with? The weatherman? Let's say he's on the phone with the weatherman. Yeah. Does that work? I mean, now it's so funny. You, know, you get so much on your phone now, right? With, with regards to the radar. And, you know, I wonder it's the next level of radar. Who's on the phone with? Well, as you can see, it's coming down harder than it has at any point since very early in this game. It's Mitch Walding to lead off the 10th. He is 0 for 13 in his major league career. 0 for 13 with 10 strikeouts. But this is what Gabe Kapler has available.
He's done very well in Triple A. Still looking to crack through here in the majors. It is point the one zero. -oh. Still looking for your first hit in the major leagues. You'd ask a tie ball game come in there and you're going OK go hit while you got water dripping from the brim of your helmet trying to see the ball. You're wiping off the bat. Getting the That's ball three who's it harder on the guy with the, the water dripping off his helmet and the slick bat or the pitcher trying to hold on to the wet ball. Well the one thing the pitcher can always do is he can always just ask for a new baseball right if it's too wet. The 3 0 strike one. Top of the order after Waldy with Cesar Hernandez on deck in a 4 4 game in the 10th. Dodgers winning the opener 7 6 last night. On a 3 1, Waldy pulls one into the shift. Hernandez, one out. Like it lined up a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. Still coming down, but not quite as hard. They're sticking it out. They want to stay long enough to see Chase Utley. Hernandez, who tonight is 0 for 4. Takes a first pitch curve for a strike. Hernandez out of Venezuela. Signed when he was 16. Grew up in Valencia, just across the street from a Winter League park there. Grounds it foul, and he's behind 0 2. Cesar's best memories as a kid are walking over to that park to watch those Winter League games and imagining himself playing pro baseball. Spiked in there one and two. Isn't that every kiss? Yeah. You know, when you go to that, when you're just engulfed in the ballpark and you're going, gosh, and you're watching the players on the field, and you look at the beautiful grass out there, and you're going, man, what it would be like to be out there playing on that. I grew up good buddies with Freddie Galvis in Venezuela. Old teammate now with the Padres. He strikes out on a high fastball and two up and two down in the 10. Good spot by Eric Adele. That's exactly where Yasmani Grandal wanted it. Climbing the ladder. Hard to lay off pitches that are up in the zone as a hitter because the ball just seems to look bigger as it's closer to your eyes. Not out of the woods yet. Reese Hoskins. And it's 17 home runs. Tonight, Reese is one for four. First pitch curve, first pitch strike. You're down with a chance at a 1 2 3 inning. He doesn't care as much about that as he does just finding a way to put up a zero and get this game to the 11. There's a one to Hoskins. The dirt ball one. Reese Hoskins, one of the most well-prepared guys you'll find. Gets to the park each day between noon and one. 
First thing he does is go into the video room, study that night's starting pitcher. And he works out, gets treatment, whatever's ailing him, into the cage for his first swings, to the field for batting practice. And he's pretty confident once the game starts that he's done everything that he can to give himself a chance to be successful that night. Said he's too competitive not to do that. Couldn't possibly get into the game thinking that there was something that he hadn't done that could have put him in a better spot. On this one one from Goodell. Oh, slips, ball two. Another blowing Goodell, but I'm sure all the fans know uh, it's wet out there, and that's what can <laughs> happen. You were just asking me about as an order on but the hitter compared to the pitcher. I said, well, the pitcher has an opportunity to get a new ball, but doesn't mean it still can't slip out of his hand. Or maybe they're mad Chase Utley's not pitching. That's probably it. I think that's more like it. Two and one on Hoskins. Here it comes. It's ball three. After Hoskins, it's Herrera. What would this place do if Chase Utley had to go throw an inning out there? Had to getting, pitch. Yeah, and then getting Philly batters out. They're cheering every time he get <laughs> one of their batters out. Parade. Yeah. Hoskins walks. And the Phillies with a two out base runner here in the 10. Now that's something the Dodgers have done a really nice job with so far this series. We talk about the Phillies not doing anything exceptionally. Well, the one thing they do is they walk a lot. They have the highest walk rate in baseball. That's only the second walk of this series issued by Dodger pitching. The Dodgers pitching staff has done an excellent job pounding the strike zone in this series. Kenta Maeda, we were talking about the performance of Kenta Maeda and just how unlucky and disappointing it is in that seventh inning, how great he was looking today. He he didn't have any walks on the day. Rain falling pretty steadily again. Gets away from Goodell, who immediately wipes his hand on his pant leg. One ball and no strikes. Rain in the forecast all three days. The Dodgers are here in Philadelphia. Last night's game went without a problem. Tonight started about 10 minutes late. Stopped and started. The rain has as the game has gone on, but yet to be delayed once it got going. On a 1 0 pitch, Herrera fouls it off. Duble taking his usual time between pitches. You hear about pitchers that work slowly. Well, Herrera has the slowest pace of any hitter in baseball. That's a stat. It's a real thing. Oh, I, I know. They have stats for everything. One and two. He says he thinks maybe gets in the pitcher's head a little bit, makes him angry. He likes that side of it. And it helps him relax a little more. Gets a few letters a year from the commissioner's office saying, look, man, you can't do that. That's against the pace of play initiatives. And at least last year, he was able to negotiate the fine down to just another warning. Not sure if he's yet had to pay. The one, two. Chop the first. Muncie to the bag. This game to the 11th. The Dodgers sending Muncie, Grandall, and Taylor to the plate. Tied at four.
Top of the 11, tied at four. The rain is let up again, so that's good. Here's Pat Nishef, who's a big signing this offseason. Two years, 16 million, but then missed the first couple of months of the season with an injury. Since coming back, Nomar, eight games, no runs. Yeah, he's really been lights out since coming out. And even his career, if you look at his career versus the Dodgers now, it's only seven in the third innings pitch against the Dodgers, but he hasn't allowed a run in those seven in the third versus the Dodgers. Some big bats coming up here. Muncie, Grandall, and Taylor. Well, it looked like Muncie a couple of times. His last time up in the eighth had put the Dodgers in front. Swung at the first pitch that he saw and hit it just outside of the pole down the line to left. And then in his next swing, flight out to the wall in right center. Nishak whips it in there, strike one. Nishak, 37 years old. Turned 38 in September. Muncie lifts a fly ball to right that got off the end of the bat. Williams with an easy play for the first out. Muncie unlucky on that. Puts a good swing on it. Really good swing. And the way it sounded, you're like, ah, maybe, but you can tell by the way the carrier that just off the end. Timing was off just a little bit. Brings up Grandall, who already has two home runs tonight. One from each side of the plate. Yelling fastball, strike one. You check with that one of a kind delivery. It's ahead of Grandall 0 and 2. 12 years in the majors for Pat Nishak. Seven different teams. Former twin, Padre, Oakland A, a Cardinal, an Astro. This is actually his second stint with the Phillies. He gets Grandall quickly. Just a lot to look at. There's a lot going on with that delivery, a lot of deception. And on top of that, there's a lot of movement on his pitch as well. He's retired the first two that he's faced, and up comes Chris Taylor. 0 for 4 tonight. That's inside the bag, and a fair ball that is played by the ball girl. And so that'll be the umpire's discretion on where to place Taylor, and a pretty easy decision to call it a double. She knew right away that she had done wrong. You feel for it, you know that she. Wants to dig herself a hole, disappear. Right when it was hit, I saw her kind of just getting into the position to field it, and I was like, no, don't touch it. <laughs> CT3 putting a good swing on this one, crushing it down the line, but right there, I was like, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't me. But she was in a great fielding position, though. That's credit where credit's due. Right. They're going to put Bellinger on intentionally here, Nomar, and bring up Kike Hernandez. So first and second, two out in a 4-4 game in the 11. Wait, and nobody, and they're not booing. Now they are. Oh, they are. Okay, I was waiting. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Took him a while. They're booing Chase's son, <laughs> his <laughs> firstborn. And if it just happened to be tuning in now, they've been booing pretty much any time somebody's come up who they think Chase Utley should be hitting for in the late innings. <laughs> Dave Roberts saving him for the pitcher's spot. We've got a few spots before it gets there in this inning. The 
looks like Kenley Jansen for the bottom of the 11. Hernandez down the line foul. I wonder if they just have Kenley in case they're able to score here right now. And if he don't, if they keep it a tie, I wonder if they're hoping Goodell can maybe go out there for another inning. But Kenley waiting and hoping, especially with a man on second base runner in scoring position. Floro and Ferguson also available down there. Another 0-2, and Hernandez fouls it again. Good job by Kike staying alive. That was a good pitch on the outer half. You can see Nishek, it looked like he was upset not being able to, you know, that he fouled it off. He thought it was a good pitch. All 10 pitches he's thrown have been strikes. Another 0 2. Another foul ball. Kike Hernandez trying to deliver for the Dodgers. So look to move to 14 and 5 here in July. Trying to clinch another series win. They took two of three from the Brewers to open this long road trip. They won last night 7 6. The play again in a few hours. In fact, first pitch is in about 13 hours. Walker Bueller with his return to the majors against Jake Arietta, 12:30 tomorrow. Two out, two out, 0-2, oh and a ground ball left side. Franco's got it across the diamond to send us to the bottom of the 11th, tied at four. Goodell for the bottom of the 11 trying to get it to the 12th now 4-4. Four, four. Other than a walk just that last inning against Hoskins and Goodell obviously looked like he was being very careful with a guy with that much power. But other than that did the job. Got him back in the dugout looking to do the same thing here. Going to have to do it against the part of the lineup that ended up in the seventh. Getting that inning going and rally going against Kenta Maeda to eventually tie this game. Tenth extra innings game for the Dodgers this season. They're four and five. They played a dozen of them last year. Franco and Williams to follow. Goodell to Santana with a curve to the corner, strike one. Carlos Santana, 32 years old. First eight years of his career with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, 
Now the first year Philly on an 0 1 takes in the dirt. 1 and 1. One of eight kids in his family. Santa Domingo, Dominican Republic. Didn't start playing baseball actually until he was 12. And immediately started playing all over the field. He's been a catcher, he's been a first baseman. At that time, he was playing some outfield. Of the game right away. Randall wants it up. Goodell puts it there, and Santana takes it to move ahead two and one. Like I said, Santana leading off the inning in the seventh, gets a single, ends up coming around and scoring. And then back in the ninth, he's led off there with a double. They left him stranded. Two one. Two and two. Uh, that looked like it might be it, huh? That ninth inning when he started it with a double, and they had Franco, who's been their hottest hitter, coming up next. Yeah. Jaguan Hudson able to combine to get out of it. Franco on deck here. Goodell to Santana with a 2 2 pitch. Soft grounder along first. Once he's got it, one out. Now this is more fantastic work out of the Dodger bullpen. Now seven and a third in this series, and they've given up just the one run on the home run against Jansen from this guy. Well, we were talking about yesterday. The win really was a big bullpen win. I thought by putting up those zeros. Right now they're doing everything they can, putting up the zeros again to try to let this offense come back into this game. The hottest Philly, two home runs in yesterday's game, and now 15 total this year. Here comes Goodell's first one. That's ball one. Feels like Franco should be much older than he actually is. 25 years old. Just he's been around so long already. Fifth year with Major League time. Well, just short of a rookie of the year. First full season in 2015. Playing his best baseball since then lately. Takes it low and he's ahead two balls no strikes. Enormous amount of potential. So much skill. Dangerous count 2 0. Cut through it 2 and 1. Santana or Franco would tell you that he tends to have issues when he's ahead in the count because he gets too big with his swing. His eyes light up. And that's not uncommon. That's one of the things you tell yourself as a hitter. You're like, okay, there are times you're, don't get too big, don't get too big. You know, stay within yourself. That's why there are times you say, maybe stay inside. Think about driving it the other way. Keep yourself from opening up and taking that big swing. That's the base hit to left. Had him positioned well, and so Peterson easily holds him to a single. Franco and he did a good job bringing those hands in nicely to get the barrel to it. Now five for nine in this series and Nick Williams comes up. And a home run in the fifth inning against Maeda. Trying to pull it back down. Phil Cousy now calling balls and strikes. Tom Hallion is back in the umpire's locker room. They've been taking that foul tip off of the mask. So it's worth noting there is no third base umpire at this point. The man short. The 1 0. Nicely placed for the splitter. One ball, one strike.
Again, one and two. Another great pitch. The pitch before was great, perfectly placed. Down and away, catches the corner. This is another one down. Very similar to what we saw Kenta Maeda do with his break, I mean his changeup today, looking like a fastball and just the bottom falling out of it. I mentioned it while Maeda's in, they're the worst changeup hitting team in baseball. The Dodgers have done a nice job exploiting that. Now fastball buzzes him in and it's two and two. Of course splitter is just a, another version of one. Franco at first, one out. 2-2 two, two to Williams. Got him swinging. Two out in the 11th. Came back with it again. Gets him a fastball in. Kind of changes sights. And then get him thinking that, all right, I'll come back at you with the fastball. Not afraid to throw you a fastball. And then making that change up look like a fastball. And swing and a miss. Jasmel Valentin, 0 for 4 tonight, and 5 for his last 46. Pretty limited playing time. It's back to about mid June. Fastball to the corner for strike one. Looking ahead to the 12th if Goodell can get one more out. Probably going to see Chase Utley. Verdugo to lead it off, then the pitcher's spot, and then Peterson. And it looks like it'll be against Luis Garcia. Movement from Franco. <laughs> kind of pretends he's going to break. Nice stop by Yasmani Grandal. Moving the feet, getting the body in front of it. The one one. Down the line foul strike two. A lot of chase on the gear around here. The one two pitch. Driven to left center field. But no big deal for Cody Bellinger. Couple of scoreless innings from Eric Goodell and four from the bullpen tonight. Let's go to the 12th in Philly.
going to bat second in this inning. Tied at four to the 12th. Joe Davis, Nomar Garcia Parr, and Alana Rizzo. And now Luis Garcia to pitch for the second night in a row for the Phillies. Well, right when he came out to warm up, and I'm not talking about Garcia, I'm talking about Chase. <laughs> you could hear the crowd was getting on their feet. They were cheering. It's like giving getting this crowd a second win. Uh-huh. Trevor Plouffe into the game as part of a double switch. He's at third. So for the pitcher's spot fifth, and Plouffe will be due to bat second in the bottom of this 12th. Top of the 12th begins with the rookie Verdugo. Looking for his first hit of this most recent call up. Has three walks. One last night, a couple tonight. One ball, no strikes. Twenty-two year old leading it off and a thirty-nine year old to follow. On a one-oh pitch for Dugo, watches it drop into the knees to even it at one and one. Utley talked after the game last night about how nervous he was. Before his at bat, even though this is his third trip back here to Philadelphia as a Dodger, he said he just can't explain it, but he gets so nervous. Strike two. As nervous as he's ever been as a baseball player, he said for his first at bat back here two years ago. Yeah, definitely. I can understand that. You just don't know. You're, and then you're coming back with, to a place that means so much to you. Two and two. You know what I mean? You don't know. You don't know what the reaction is going to be like. You know what you're hoping for, but you also don't know how you're going to feel and the emotions that are just going to naturally kick in. Tied in the 12th, Verdugo leading it off. Lifting one, right center, Herrera comes on and makes the catch to bring up Chase Utley. Big spots last night. Said the same thing we'll say now, and that is it would be so Chase Utley of him to deliver on this stage. He's been one of the best pinch hitters in baseball all season, no matter the stage. And here on a 1 0 pitch from Luis Garcia, Utley takes ball two. More than 1,500 games in a Phillies uniform. Six time All Star. Included a five year run where he went five consecutive years as one of the best players in baseball. See if he gets one to drive on 2 0. He smacks a base hit to left field. Pinch hit single in the 12th for the man, Chase Utley.
and applause all around. 97. Still hit 97. Why is he going to retire? <laughs> Beautifully like that. You don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> and the fans have all the, the pent up dislike for the other team. They're going to let it rain down on Jock Peterson as he's announced. Want to know why Dave Roberts isn't pulling Chase Huntley back to have him hit again? <laughs> a three for five night for Jock and a seven for 12 start to this second half for him. Huntley jumping around, drawing the throw. Love it. Home crowd getting on their pitcher. Like, what are you trying to pick up Chase Utley for? That's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> that is great. Uh, that hovers in there for a strike. Really, for the Phillies fans, it's like the perfect outcome. They get to see their guy come through and get a hit, but at this point it hasn't beat them. You know, because right. each of the last two years when Utley came back, he got standing ovations after big hits because it didn't matter. The Phillies were 30 games below 500. That's foul and it's 0-2. Well, now the Phillies are playing for first place, and they want their guy to do well and be happy and have a great return here. But they sure don't want to lose. It'll be interesting because Chase Utley right there on that one kind of looked like he was looking to see if he can steal a base. And I'm wondering if he does decide to go and he steals it safe and he gets safe. What the reaction would be if he gets in the scoring position. Yeah. With the potential winning run right. in scoring position. Yeah. Chase this season two steals and three tries. Oh and two on Peterson. Garcia seeing the same thing. I love the reaction of the crowd. <laughs> Shorter lead this time. I widens it, not running. Peterson strikes out in a back foot breaking ball. Uncharacteristic of John Peterson lately. One of the very few we've seen John Peterson as far as getting fooled. So Machado gets yet another opportunity here to extend that 23 game on base streak. Shooting it 0 for 5 so far tonight. The 26 year old that a lot of people think could wind up here in Philly long term. Philly's fans would like to think that that's the case. With Utley at first and two out, here it comes. Chano cuts and misses. Fly ball to left, but he got it off the end of the bat. That's Hoskins. That's the inning. To the bottom of the 12. You have to see the man with the base hit. And now they get to see this game to the bottom of the 12 still tied.
Five relievers have combined to put up four zeros. Well, once again, the bullpen doing their job. They did their job last night's game. They're doing it again today. Now counting on somebody else coming out of that bullpen to go out there and put up another zero. Alexander to Shagwa to Roscup to Hudson to Goodell who went two innings and now no more it's Dylan Floro. And Dylan Floro asked to do the job we were talking about yesterday when you, you used four out of the bullpen to put up a zero and I'm not counting Kenley Jansen because they ended up hitting a home run off them but used five out of the bullpen. Well, obviously these extra innings you got to use a lot more out of there but hoping for the same result. And really hoping for it here when you look ahead to the 13th and see the Dodgers have the heart of the order coming up with Muncie, Grandall, and Taylor. This is the man that tied it back in the seventh, Jorge Alfaro. Hardest hit home run of the season by a Philly. Opposite field job against Maeda for number seven of the season. The 25 year old from Columbia. So here we go. Tied at four in the 12th. Floral winds and deals his first pitch of the night, and it's a slider, which we've not seen a ton of. It dips down and away for ball one. Been a couple different fastballs from him, but not too many sliders. to back sliders and a good one. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Look how tight the break was breaking on the outer half. One and one and Floral back downhill Threw it again down the line to right Verdugo is sprinting over but it's out of play. We we're talking about that shot that Alfaro hit earlier off of the bat there was no question where this thing was headed. Fastball in the outer half and everybody in the ballpark knew it. And Franco didn't waste any time Alfaro knew it Maeda knew it. Dad strength. A guy who had a son a couple of years ago. Abiel is his son. As it's his motivation. Come to work every day and give it his best. On a one two from Floro he strikes out fastball above the letters for the first out of the twelve. Climbing the ladder. Great pitch. That's actually the, the pitch that they were looking for from Maeda. And he ended up missing, not getting it high enough that Alfaro hit for a home run. Floro is able to execute it. And up comes Trevor Plouffe. He's got a couple of 20 plus home run seasons on his resume with the Twins years ago, but it's bounced around in recent years. Tie game in the 12th. It takes a backup slider, 1 0. Oh. We've seen more sliders in this outing. I think we saw the first few combined from Dylan Floro. Again. It's a nice slider right there. Well, now he 
probably just scouting reports, but probably something that he's been talking to with himself and Honeycutt and some of the catchers about what adjustments he might be able to make. And then a fastball that misses, two and one. So on seven pitches, five of them have been sliders. A two on pitch and a slider to the corner for strike two. It's working right now. You're feeling it. You feel like you have the command of it. Keep going to it. Ball over the outside corner, two out. Right now, Floro's able to dot his fastball. Also, command that slider. Two pitches, he's got work. Tied at four in the twelfth, and here's Hernandez with the bases empty and two out. Strike one. Tries to lay off and does. Ball on a strike. Well, Floro had thrown a two or three sliders per outing over his first five games in a Dodger uniform. He's already thrown six in this outing. He's ready for a 1 1 pitch. So is Cesar Hernandez. Here it is. Golf foul, 1 and 2. Souvenir for the lucky guy. Your chances of getting one increase as you stay later and later, and the crowd thins out. And the five hour mark of this one. Old foul. And you got to see Utley hit. You get a base hit. Patience so is a virtue to teach him tonight. It's his turn. He got his ball. He's out of here. High fives all around. Flora looking for a 1 2 3 12. Dylan is a California guy. Born in Merced, California. Went to Cal State Fullerton. Drafted by Andrew Friedman with the Rays. He strikes out the side here in the 12th. And the bullpen just keeps on putting up zeros. We keep on playing to the 13th in Philly.
On to the 13th inning. The Dodgers and Phillies are tied at four. Dodgers last run came in the sixth inning. Phillies last runs came in the seventh. It was a half a game ago under a full moon. Luis Garcia back out there to handle the 13th. Part of the order for the Dodgers coming up here. Nomar, Muncy, Grandall, and Taylor. Well, the Dodgers in the 11th. The first time they had an at bat with a runner in scoring position since the fifth inning of this game. And they couldn't get him around. They had guy get on, one out in this last inning. Couldn't score him. Now just trying to get the leadoff batter here. Just kind of get something moving. Slowly they're getting over the last couple and they're finally getting some guys on because they had like 13 guys retired in a row. Garcia to Muncie with a 1 0 pitch. Max takes it low. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, they went from the home run from Grandall in the sixth until the two out single from Jock Peterson in the tenth without a base runner. And then they were able to get a couple base runners in the eleventh. One out single for Muttley in the twelfth. Both teams still trying to crack through with that next run, though. 3 0 on Max Muncie. Even with the pop that he's added and the 23 home runs, he's maintained that elite eye, awareness of the strike zone. Out of the green light if he wants it. 3 0 pitch. A pitcher's pitch and strike one. Muncy hit 206 as a rookie in 2015 in Oakland. It was downhill from there in 16. He hit 186. 279 coming into this game. And leading the league in OPS. What a story he's been in this first half plus of this season. A 3 1. Chase, 3 and 2. Rarely do you see him do that. Yeah, he's upset with himself. I mean, took the pitch 3-0, and he might have just told himself, I'm going to take 3-0. And then that one, he rarely chases off of the plate. So now it's full, and here comes a payoff pitch. He went around. Ooh. Home plate umpire Phil Cunzi making the call and Muncie doing what a hitter's always going to do and that's the case. Saying why didn't you just ask? Going over to third, ask him and that one he might have gone. But you still want them to just ask. Just ask. Because if you saw it, you had home plate umpire saw. Gotta believe the third base umpire saw. Yeah, what do you got to lose? Right. Grandall, since his two home runs, has struck out each of his last two times. First one from Garcia. Drops in there for a strike. Former 12th overall pick. Generous outside corner that time has him in an 0-2 hole. Ooh. Gets away from him. He got a piece of him. That got a piece of Alfaro in his arm. Yeah, that looks like his forearm. Mm. I wonder if he wants to try to throw one. It's probably what home plate umpire because he's asking him. You can see the well.
Grandal says to feel your pain brother. One out 13th inning. Garcia to Grandal with a one two pitch. Got it. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Grandal after the two home runs. This pitch is nasty. We were talking about the split finger action of Kenta Maeda. And then you have that one from Garcia. Just dropping. He comes at you at 97 miles an hour with his fastball. Two out for Taylor. Came up with two outs in the 11th and doubled down the line for his first hit of the night. Back up breaking ball and he deflects it foul. Yep. Have that one back. Yeah, huh? that was the pitch. That was one he saw well. It was in his wheelhouse. It was on the inner half. See this one? They wanted it away, but that's breaking ball right where you like it. Fouls it off. Those are the ones you think about at night. Oh and two. Garcia strikes out the side in the 13 right through the heart of the Dodger order to the bottom half we go still locked at four. Out there for the 13th, still in a 4 4 game. And the most innings Dylan Floro has pitched this year for the Dodgers is two innings. And he's done that seven times so far for the Dodgers. I'm sorry, I'm looking at Daniel Hudson so far. I apologize. It's late. The most he's done, the most Floro has done is three innings. Sorry, he's done that twice for the Dodgers. Four minutes short of midnight here in Philadelphia. It was pushed back about 12 minutes in because of rain. And it's now become the longest game of the season for the Phillies. Matching the longest as far as innings. It is the longest as far as time. They're hoping they have the right group coming up to end it. Hoskins, Herrera, and Santana. 17, 18, 15. The home run totals for those three guys. Floro trying to extend it to a 14th inning. His first one to Hoskins. A little bit inside, ball one.
One and one. Reese, spelled R H Y S. Dad had a friend that spelled it that way, liked it. And if he had a son, that's what he wanted to name him. Watches the slider miss. He's ahead two and one. Now Reese Hoskins, three years in college, he was a good hitter, but not an incredible power hitter. 25 home runs in his three college seasons with the metal bats. And then after rookie ball, he started making a conscious effort to get the ball in the air a little bit more, added a leg kick. And went to a couple different winter leagues to try and lock in those new mechanics. Went to the Dominican, played there, went to Australia, played some there. And after he hits 25 home runs in three years of college baseball, a few years later, shows up in the majors, hits 18 home runs in his first 34 games. This year, he's got 17. 25 year old on a 3 1 pitch. Takes ball four, and the leadoff man is aboard for the Phillies. Second walk for Hoskins tonight. And Flora gets ready to face Herrera. Final in Chicago, by the way. The Diamondbacks have beaten the Cubs for the second night in a row. Cubs hadn't lost back to back games in more than a month before Arizona showed up. 5 1 final tonight. Floral lets it go and has strike one. The Dodgers and Diamondbacks saw each other so often over the first month and a half of the season. It's been weird having this long gap not seeing them at all. And they won't until the final couple days of August. But they'll play that four game series at Dodger Stadium. And then they'll play three in Arizona on the final road trip of the year for the Dodgers. Welcome to Wednesday in Philly. That's a cutter inside one and one. Would you like a doubleheader when this, the game starts later on today? You get paid by the game? Sure. <laughs> For you, yeah. <laughs> That's right, too. One of these teams is going to get a nice boost by winning this game late. The other one's going to have about 12 hours to dust itself off and come back for the final game of the series at 1230 tomorrow. 1235 first pitch. Walker Bueller for the Dodgers. And Jake Arrieta for the Phillies. Later today. Floro to the guy they call Little Bull. Odubo Herrera strokes one on the line to right. That is caught by Verdugo. Hit it right on the screws, but right at Verdugo, and there's one out. Wanted it up, got it up. Herrera just unlucky, lucky for the Dodgers right at. Verdugo. And climbed the ladder. Herrera, when he hit, he hit his home run yesterday, it's the same spot where he oh. hit his home run. It was a fastball up in the zone, and he was able to get the barrel to it there. Have to look again at the scouting report. 
Santana's been good tonight. Single and a double. With one out in the 13th, he takes ball one from Floro. Hard ground ball. That is a fair ball over Muncie. Well, they're going to say foul, actually. First base umpire Adam Hamari had called it fair, it appeared. But then pointed to home plate umpire Phil Cuzzy and said, Your call. And Phil said, Foul ball. I guess no, that called, is a he foul. Called, he, call. called, he called a foul right away. Adam was all over it. Plays over the bag like that, where the ball bounces over the bag, you can't challenge. They've got to live with it. And Floral brings a 1 1 that Santana watches spin away. That was close. It was interesting. It looked like it hit the edge of the chalk and then actually kind of kicked more. You anticipated that would kick more foul, but it kind of like stayed on its. And it's playing there. It's a tough call. Two and two. Rolls into the on deck circle where Zach Eflin is standing. Last night's starting pitcher. If Kappler's out of position, players at this point. Davis warming down in that bullpen. If this gets to the 14th. Ground ball left side. Machado will shovel with his glove to Taylor, who stole the first is late. And Santana's aboard on a fielder's choice to keep the inning alive. This here typical 5-6 fielder's choice. One shortstop to another at second base. Six six. Yeah, right. Now their best hitting pitcher is Vince Velasquez, but Velasquez is down in the bullpen right now. Perhaps making himself available to give Gabe Kapler an inning or two. Who knows? He pitched on Sunday. Four and out away from getting it to the 14th, where Bellinger, Hernandez, and Verdugo would come up. Story tonight, besides the obvious of the game going very long, is the bullpen, the work that it's done. Strike one. And to my eight seven innings tonight through six was spectacular before giving up those three in the seventh. Five and two thirds scoreless out of the pen. Eflin dribbles it foul and it's quickly 0 and 2. Two pitch. Chase to slider, and that's that for the Phillies in the 13th. 
Dylan Floro the latest to put up great work out of the pen. He pitched in the game yesterday, came in for any, had recorded one strikeout. He struck, he has struck out 21 batters in 15 and a third innings to begin his career. And he's only surrendered just two hits in his the last 25 batters he's faced. Bellinger lead it off, then Hernandez, then Verdugo. Dodgers led this one 4 1 after five innings or after six innings. Single runs in the first, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Phillies tied it in the seventh. That's where we are now. It's Davis pours in strike one to Bellinger. One and one. You know, one of the uh, one of the names we talked about earlier tonight is uh, the trade block. Maybe the top starter available is Cole Hamels, who of course is traded out of here. That's uh, a strike one and two. It was on this date in 2012 that he finalized the contract that will wrap up soon. Six years, 144 million. Only CC Sabathia at that point had signed a bigger contract. That's no pitch. It's an option on that contract for next season. That's this date, as in the 25th here on the East Coast. Ellinger taps it foul, and it stays at one and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bellinger's worked it full. They get off the 14th against Austin Davis. Popping one up. This is going to stay in play. Alfaro left the mask on and made a lunging catch for the first out. You can see how far third baseman Pluth was when he hit that ball, but there was really no help 
from the third baseman. They just kind of left Alfaro going, this is all you. And you see Poof kind of coming over there. He was playing the shift so far, so that's why he, he wasn't there to help. A nice catch by Alfaro. It wasn't easy. So with one out, it's Kike Hernandez. Strike one. Straight back, going two. Point of the night where you can hear the individual hecklers. It's the wrong town to have to deal with that. They're tough here, Nomar, right? They're passionate here. They, they're good too. As far as heckling, uh huh. So, so there are places where you go, man. They're just that was a good one, <laughs> and you just kind of go, man. And then you start going to the dugout. They're like, did you hear that one? That was pretty good. <laughs> Hernandez with a lazy fly ball to center field. Odubel Herrera two gone. They got me on that one, right? Tip my cap. Verdugo. Talked earlier about his close relationship with his parents, Joe and Shelley. His love for baseball it came from his older brothers, Joey and Chris, both in their 20s. Waits on it, sends it foul and two. Alex would tag along like a lot of little brothers do, go to the big brothers games and practices. He'd spend hours hitting off a tee. He wasn't old enough to play yet. He just hit it into the chain link fence along the field. Strikes out here. One, two, three, go the Dodgers in the 14th to the bottom half. Season, both with the Cincinnati Reds. He did it once in April. Did it again in June. Both cases put up zeros. Sitting at 32 pitches. Most he's thrown in an outing this year, 48. But digging deep for the Dodgers in a 4-4 game. Where the bullpen has been fantastic to get it this far. Fanatic doesn't wane in energy. Trying to get the crowd and this Philly offense going. The 
Dodger, Dodger, just ignore him. Just ignore him. Don't worry about it. Go focus getting the outs. Good pep talk. There you go. Williams, Valentin, and Alfaro against Floro here in the 14th inning. Williams takes a first pitch strike. This guy's a freak athlete, Nick Williams. He was as good at football and basketball as he was baseball. Galveston, Texas, went to Ball High School. Jim and Mike Evans, NFL receiver now. We're best friends and teammates on all those teams. Ball on a strike. He chose baseball. Second round pick. Fanatic can more comfortably be up there now with the extended netting. But he can't lean in. He's sometimes he used to hang his head over into the That's true. visiting dugout and mess with the players there. Can't do that anymore with the netting. I mean, he finds other ways, not that he's too worried about that. Yeah, good improviser. Yeah. Not sure what that is. 2 1. Ground ball left side, pass Machado. Leadoff hit for Williams. Well, the ball wasn't hit really hard, but just with the shift on, just good placement. This game's now been going for five hours and has seen 406 pitches. And it's about to see its 39th player. Dave Roberts comes out. Take it from Floro just yet. Might be checking on him, seeing how he's feeling, letting the defense know. What he wants and how he wants played as well, being aware of possible sacrifice. Next man up would be Kenley Jansen. He's warmed a few times tonight in anticipation of the Dodgers getting one in the top of the inning to turn it into a save situation. Hasn't transpired yet. Valentin takes strike one. The only other arm down there is Caleb Ferguson, and Ferguson went three innings on Sunday. They're doing their best to be careful with that young arm. So at this point, doesn't look like Ferguson is an option tonight or this morning, whatever you want to call it. Flora home with an 0 1. That's down the line foul, strike two. If Dave Roberts chooses to say go to Kenley, say maybe going for a four out, <laughs> you know, get four outs, maybe get one out here, and then pot hoping that the team can get a run the next inning and then try to close the game out. Well, the pitcher spot is coming up, leading off the inning, but he does have position players, so he could do a double switch with, say, Foresight or Barnes. Williams at first after the leadoff single. Floral, homo two. And here to center field, Cody Bellinger. So Jesswell is 0 for 6. And now he's going to make that double switch. It will be Foresight to come in, and so he'll be due to lead off the 15th inning if the Dodgers can get it there. Hernandez comes out. That means the pitcher's spot goes seventh. And Kenley Jansen with one out in the 14th inning when you come back.
onto the bench for the purpose of this graphic, and then they can be used as hitters. Uh, one legit position player left because Logan Forsyth has come in here to play second base. That's Austin Barnes for the Dodgers. And one reliever each side. But remember, Sir Anthony Dominguez threw a lot of pitches last night. And Caleb Ferguson threw three innings two days ago, likely not available. For now, it's Kenley Jansen. Well, we have seen a pitcher hit already for, we saw Effling come in here uh -huh. and pinch hit for the Phillies. And now it's up to Kenley Jansen. Keep doing what the bullpen has been able to do since the seventh inning, and that's put up some zeros. Change, by the way. Hernandez was coming in just to change his glove. He stays in, goes to right. It's for Dugo that comes out. Forsyth is now at second. One on one out, 14th inning, and a 4 4 game. And Jansen will check on Williams. Williams two steals this year he's been caught twice. That's ball one. Now the bullpen in this series ten and two thirds has given up just one run. Here's the home run that Jansen allowed to Franco in the ninth inning last night. Franco's out of the game, by the way. Came out in a double switch. One of those innings. Well placed. One and one. We're getting dangerously close to needing another scorecard, aren't we? Out of columns. It happens. No room on the back. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at going, where else can we go? But we'll find a no, way. Yeah, that's right. And hopefully the Dodgers find a way because you don't mind going through a scorecard if they're able to pull off a victory here. I think you can split the margin right. into two innings over there. We got 16 innings worth on this thing. Farrell one for five tonight with a game tying two run homer made it 4 4 in the seventh. Here he takes one right down the middle at just 89 from Kenley one and two. He's thrown three pitches 89 90 89. Struck him out. That's how last night's game ended. Tonight it's the second out of the 14. Well, they wanted a top of the zone. That didn't quite get as high as they would like, but still effective with Afaro getting a swing and miss. How bad that dirt's kicking yeah. out of his shoes. Hardest pitch that Kenley's thrown so far, just 91. Still not that 93, 94 we're used to seeing. This is Trevor Plouffe. Came off of the bench and is now playing third. Jansen trying to pitch around the leadoff single against Floro. If it gets to the 15th, it'll match the longest game of the year for the Dodgers this year. Opening road trip of the year. They played 15 in Arizona. Game went five hours and 46 minutes. Had him stumble in, but he's back in.
One ball, no strikes. Little cha cha slide between pitches. One one. It's one of the longest dance songs ever. You know the song. No, it was a Cupid Shuffle, wasn't it? They could play that. It was a Cupid Shuffle. Why aren't you doing it? Because I don't think it's going to help. The Cupid Shuffle. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. Good call. A one one. Fly ball center field Cody Bellinger. This game continues to the 15th. Tied at four. Fourteenth inning. Joe Davis, Nomar Garcia Parra, Alana Rizzo. Glad you're still with us. We are now within 12 hours of the start time of the series finale, which will pit Walker Bueller for the Dodgers against Jake Arrieta of the Phillies. And here's Logan Forsythe, who came in in a double switch to lead this 15th inning off. So this is matching the longest game of the season for the Dodgers. You've split your uh, columns over there. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to create new columns on the scorecard. You want to show them? You got? What's that? Just got it right there. Just drew a line a and tried to make there. a cut extra. So it's not pretty, but yeah. good job. Yeah. I can do it for you a little later. There you go. There you go. I got you. No, yours is so pretty. Yeah, but you make great lines. It looks like <laughs> two and one, or one and one. You're distracted by how straight your lines were. All thrown <laughs> off. That's to the back door, and it's one and two. The challenge is also writing all the pictures that are being used, and that was, but. Challenge at hand right now, scoring a run. After Forsyth, it's back to the top. Peterson and Machado. On a 1 2, Forsyth strikes out swinging. And here's Jock. Three for six tonight. Game like this would be a hard one to not feel good, right? To have the ball look small. Yeah, that, could, that could really hurt the numbers in a hurry, but 
Trout seemingly is seeing it all right, putting up good numbers tonight. Strike one. Hope he didn't hurt himself. A big swing there, and see him just kind of moving around after taking that swing. Already seeing Dr. Fans have seen an oblique get strained on the swing. That's the LB now. Oh, and two. As we said earlier in this one, way earlier in this one, Yasiel Puig rehabbing the next few nights with Oklahoma City and supposed to join the Dodgers in Atlanta Saturday. One out in the 15th, Jack Peterson punches one foul. Oh, yeah, well, we've reached that time of night. Alien head, Alex yeah, Wood. Serious rally cap and vibe going on over there. That's a shot past the diving Valentine. And Jack Peterson has his fourth hit of the night, trying to turn it into a double, and he does. Whatever that is worked. Great hustle by Jock Peterson. What? Great job. Great at bat. We've been talking about him hitting that spot over there, that shortstop hole, staying inside the ball, but hustling right out of the box, recognizing that he might be able to get a double out of it. Getting his head down, hitting the bag. Good turn, a good slide here right in front of the bag. Especially with one out. Steven got the cups on his hands. And I tell you what, the baseball gods transpiring to keep Manny Machado's on base streak alive one way or another. And they did. It's going to extend to 24 games with a 15th inning intentional walk after an 0 for 6 start. Not that he knows or cares, but it's fun for us to follow. And it puts it on Muncie's shoulders. The cap are just electing to set up the force at all three backs. Well, we talked about a bad night to have a bad night. Well, Jock's gone four for seven. Muncie hitless in his six tries. Two on, one out. Strike one. You can forget about all of that if he can come through here and crack through in the 15. Nine innings after the Dodgers got their last run. And two. This one's getting dangerously close to position player pitching battle. Anthony Dominguez is the only guy left for the Phillies. Jansen's it for the Dodgers, assuming they'll stay away from Ferguson. Uh, and the fans won't be able to get what I'm sure what they really want is possibly to see Chase Utley be that position player because he's out of the game. Pinch hit. They got that, so they were excited. But we were talking about that being a possibility. I think they that should make the, an exception. Right? Commissioner well, I bet, you, get him on the I bet phone. you the fans would love it. Uh-huh. You saw Vince Velasquez down there. This is... I guess technically his side day is one of the starters, and it looks like he may pitch. One ball and two strikes. If it were to continue. Muncie in the heart of the order trying to ensure that it doesn't. Peterson a double, Machado a walk, and now on one two, Max Muncie takes ball two. Stroke to the left. 
Hoskins back still going he's on the track and started to stagger a bit but able to haul it in for out number two. So now it's grand all. Tonight homered in the fourth and homered in the sixth. Since then three strikeouts. He had three strikeouts total in his previous five games. Another one of those cases where it's all forgotten if he can come through. Crack the code in the 15. That's a strike. You can hear the Phillies radio broadcast echoing through the ballpark now. Yeah, it's because it's <laughs> so many people season. have have left, and understandably, there's still quite a few sticking it out. And two. Game started at 4:17 Los Angeles time. 7:17 here in Philly. Peterson at second, Machado at first, Davis Olmo two, and Grandall leaves it up. It's like an old Dodger game with Vince Scully with all the transistor radios yeah. after into the park. Shades are one and two. Over the head of Alfaro, and both runners advance. It's two and two on Grandall. Well, that's how the Dodgers scored their first run way back in the first inning yesterday. Best chance for the Dodgers in a while. 2 2. Pop foul. And all these are the top hitter in baseball on a lot of measures in July. You better be careful if you're Davis getting too tricky there. For a third, Trevor Plouffe is telling Austin Davis, settle down. Well, that's, you know, that's what Jock Peterson was trying to do, just to see if he can get him to possibly block. 2-2 two, two again. Struck him out. Dodgers leave him at second and third. It is still 4-4. Four, four.
Rodgers. They were put into work in the eighth, unscored upon. They have done their job. They did their job yesterday. Dodgers get the victory. So far, they've done their job here. Still trying to pull off the victory. Now you have your closer on <laughs> on the mound. Trying to put up another zero. Got the final couple outs of the 14th. They'll face the top of the order in the 15th. Cesar Hernandez fouls off the first pitch. 25 years ago here in Philadelphia, the Dodgers, the old vet. The Phillies played a 20 inning game. The Dodgers finally cracked through in that game in the top of the 20th with one run before the Phillies scored twice in the bottom of the 20th to win. Can you imagine? Yes. Did it happen to you? Well, that we didn't play game? 20, but we I remember playing the Phillies and going into extra innings and scoring runs and then coming back and then scoring more in the bottom of it. Extra innings, yeah. Ramon Martinez, Terry Mahalan were the starters that day. 1993. Foul back, still 0 2. The longest game in Major League history as far as innings was a Dodger game. 1920 they played 26 innings against the Boston Braves finished in a tie Hernandez down on strikes to open the 15. How about this they played 26 innings that day the Dodgers and the Boston Braves 1920 three hours and 50 minutes. <laughs> Is that salt in the room? No yeah. Here we're in the 15th at the five and a half hour mark. Right. 26 innings in three hours so and 50 minutes. One one three hours, 50 minutes. So you're going if they kept playing to the five hours. We got 37. Right. Hoskins. Jansen delivers. Hoskins corks one down the line. It's hooking fair. Reese Hoskins with a one out double. Been on four times tonight. Little Buck, Henley Jansen, we're talking about when he came in the game throwing 89, 90. There's 94. Inner half. Hoskins does a good job getting to that ball. Just keeping it fair. And the Phillies have had their chances. Most notably, the bottom of the ninth inning, Carlos Santana started with a double, but was stranded at second. They put Herrera on intentionally, set up the force at all three bags, and bring Santana up. There's nobody left down in that Dodger bullpen. This thing gets to the 16th. They're probably going to see a position play. At least for the Dodgers. Vince Velasquez. It appears is going to give the Phillies some innings. Well, Santana tonight, two hits in six tries. Four four game in the 15th inning. Two on one out Jansen deals and Santana takes strike one.
Bouncing ball gently right side. Muncie will hit Jansen, who takes it to the back foul number two. Winning run moves up to third. And guess who's coming up? It's the relief pitcher. Couple scoreless innings so far for Austin Davis, but now here he is as a hitter because there's nobody left. And he came off the mound that last inning and fired up after he was able to get Yasmani Grandal striking out. His third career big league plate appearance, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Shows bunt and takes a strike. Thinking about a two out squeeze. Well, no, he just, you had the, them playing back. He was probably, he was definitely trying to go for a bunt for a base hit, see if he yeah. catch guys by surprise. See Rich Hill do that. Uh huh. Ball and one strike. Not just two plate appearances as a big leaguer, two plate appearances as a pro. Never made one in the minors. Twenty-five year old from Scottsdale, Arizona, waits on this one-one. Cuts and misses strike two. and trying to get it to the 16th where it looks like things are officially about to get weird. The one two. Fouled it off. Good job staying alive. Got him swinging. On to the 16th. You know the score is. Starter. Last two outings, Nomar, he's gone 13 innings, no runs on just four hits. Most recently, Sunday against the Padres, seven shutout innings, two hits allowed. Yeah, he's been outstanding this year now coming in because this is a day that he usually has his side work. And so the Dodgers are hoping that he can just you know, take it easy, throw BP for them <laughs> coming in. But I'm sure. Yeah, no, we know that's not the case. But it'll be. 
We know what the Phillies have here coming in, obviously going through their bullpen and going through their players. What's interesting is who the Dodgers will have coming out for the next inning. Velasquez out of Pomona, California. Gary High School, former Viking. Facing Taylor, Bellinger, Hernandez. There's nobody warming in that Dodger bullpen leads you to believe it's going to be a position player. Any guesses? Kike. That would be that would be my first guess. We still have Austin Barnes that could. He can probably throw but we can come out. Play a position. Mm -hmm. Two balls and no strikes. Now Velasquez has done some good things in his career but the single worst outing that he's ever had came against the Dodgers Had a hundred friends and family there at Dodgers Stadium being a Southern California guy and got absolutely tagged. That's a strike two and one gave up nine runs on eleven hits in front of those hundred friends and family. Two balls and a strike. And the 26 year old Velasquez home to Taylor. Ground ball to third. There's Ploof. Wow. CT hit it hard. Just bad aim. Bellinger now who's one for five. His single is back in the fourth. His walk was in the 11th. Longest game of the year for the Dodgers at 16 innings surpassing the one on April 2nd in Arizona. That tails away and it's one and oh. Velasquez well, such an intense Competitive guy. This is here 2 0. Oh. In the past, he's had a tendency to get too amped up because of that. And this year, one of the things he's taken to to try and combat how amped up he gets is he'll sing to himself. Do you know what song? Whatever comes to him, he oh, says. All right. That's a base hit to center for Bellinger. Second of the night for him. Go ahead, run reaches with one out in the 16. So say Kenley Jansen, they were going to keep him in there. He has 19 pitches. So then you see Rich Hill running out there. Try to save the day. <laughs> you got, you got. Herrera out there messing with him as he's running in the center field like kind of like getting out of his way joking with him. Then you got Austin Barnes on deck. For now it's Hernandez. Ball one. Can't be an easy thing for a guy like Velasquez who's not made a relief appearance since he was a rookie in 2015 in Houston. Before he came to the Phillies in the Ken Giles trade. Completely different routine down there, let alone the fact that it's 16th inning and he had no plans of pitching today. Here's his 1 0. That's a strike, 1 and 1. Barking out of that Dodger dugout. It's worked out okay for the umpiring situation. Remember, Phil Cuzzy started this game as the second base umpire, so he's not had to work all 16 behind the plate. He came in when Tom Hallion had to leave, taking a foul tip to the mask. Probably didn't think he was going to have to work nine innings no. though when he came in.
Let's see if Dave Roberts puts Bellinger in motion at some point here. Dodgers run very infrequently. Hernandez gets under it. Cesar Hernandez back and under it for out number two. And now it is Barnes, the final position player available on either side in this game to hit in the pitcher spot. Dodgers have been encouraged with some of his results lately. It's the process that they're seeing as the results. Comes Velasquez. Ball one. Now it's interesting with Hill loosening. Hill was lining up to start one of the first two games in Atlanta. So we'll see how that alters the plans as far as the rotation for that series. We talked about it, six man rotation for the moment, but things one way or another tend to work themselves out to, uh, to not give you a glut of starting options. 2-0 on Barnes. And that's when Dave Roberts said every time he was getting asked about it, he says, well, right now that is the plan. But you just never know. We all know that with baseball. You never make plans. No. I hope you didn't have plans after this one. Oh, totally. Three hundred sixty four days till your next birthday. Three hundred sixty three now on the East Coast. Three and oh. Kudos to those folks hanging around. It is 101 Eastern Time. That's a four pitch walk for Barnes. He can't believe it. <laughs> He's just tired though. <laughs> What's going on? He's probably going, I just got here. What's going on? <laughs> the gates were open, they let me in. Two on, two out, 4 4 game in the 16th. The Dodgers last scored in the sixth inning. And Logan Forsythe, who came on to hit in the 15th and struck out. Up there here in the 16th. Slider to the corner, strike one. See Cody Bellinger saying that ball was away. On the dugout now. Mm -hmm. They can tell the height, but get a pretty good view of the inside and outside corners from there. Can Forsyth come through? That one scoots through the legs of Alfaro. And for the second inning in a row, a ball that gets past Alfaro puts runners in second and third with two out. Analytical perspective, just poor sequencing of these wild pitches and pass balls. Let's bring a couple together and yeah. Different story. Perhaps alters what Velasquez is comfortable with here. One ball and one strike. Logan Forsyth. Here it is. 
Buzzes in, ball two. In that last inning with Jock Peterson with the wild pitch getting the third. You know, the fly ball to left field before. Usually if it was easy, he'd go back and possibly maybe think about tagging, but the way he was carrying, he had to get a better read. He had to be off, so there was no way. So then he finally gets the wild pitch, and that moves him to third. On a 2-1, Forsyth takes ball three. Vince Velasquez, starting pitcher for the Phillies. This is his side session day, his bullpen day. The bill on the Phillies out, they're out of re relievers, assuming that Sir Anthony Dominguez at this point is unavailable, would have pitched already if he was free. But running into trouble, Velasquez is. Second and third, two out. And a 3-1 to Logan Forsyth. Full count. Calling timeout. <laughs> Do not know what time it is. Plenty of Dodger fans hanging around too. Bellinger's at third and Barnes is at second. Tied in the 16th as a 3 2 comes home. Morgan Forsyth strikes out. Team. Nomar, what's your future? Well, he features a fastball that averages about 97 to 98 miles an hour. Oh, no, that's only when he throws in right field and when he throws across the diamond. But <laughs> he does have a cannon. He does have a good arm. And, you know, I'll tell you, despite having a great arm, one of the things they tell you as a position player to go out there when you're throwing is be smart, don't overthrow, don't try to go out there and just blow it by guys. Be smart. They don't want to get, especially as valuable as Kike is to this team and his versatility. Don't want him to get hurt. Just go out there, try to throw strikes. And it is uh, musical chairs out there as far as the new positions. Chris Taylor's in center field. Bellinger is now in right. 
Logan Forsythe at third base. Williams swings at the first pitch and in right center it is Bellinger to flag it down and snow cone it for the first down. With a smile on his face. DK trying to hold one back. You forgot the efficient part in your scouting report. Right. I, yeah, he's throws strikes, pitches to contact. <laughs> High fly ball rate. He really utilizes his defense, understands where his defense is playing. Keeps them on their toes. Holds the follow through. I mean, he does it all, doesn't he? He really does. And now he can really say that. Yep. Valentin takes the ball. As a pro, he's now done everything other than catch. Behind here, three and zero. Oh. Where is that one? That's when he's got to start going. Where are those? Right there. Quit squeezing them. Right. Haven't I done enough to right. earn that? Three and one. Quick worker. It's another reason why defense loves playing behind Kike. It's a walk. That's interesting. Rich Hill sprinted out there to warm up. Warm. Well, I, I think Rich Hill comes in if the Dodgers are able to score there because okay. they're going, okay, we got we can use our closer. Maybe. But if this goes more, I'm not sure Dave Roberts is like, I don't know if I want to use Rich Hill more than just one inning. So I think that's that was factoring in there. El Faro. PK was ready to go and he's upset that Jorge wasn't. Oh, nice pitch. He didn't get the call. A little cutting action. That's a good pitch. Caught the corner. Two and zero. He's got to remind himself to make sure he stops. Two. Back walks and they're first and second. Now it's Trevor Plouffe. That's a strike with a nice frame job by Grandall. How about this? An East Coast game is the last game going. All well, the West Coast games already finished up. Couldn't lay off, could he? Well, apparently he did. One and one. I've been watching TK. I just want him to make sure he's careful of is when he comes set. You know, to make sure you come set, because I don't want you to be called for a balk. Right. Remind yourself, make sure you come set. And he and he's changing it, but a few times spring pretty quick. working quick. There it is. That was better. Better pause there. Oh, good pitch. Ooh. 
good one. Good movement on that one. Yeah, it was. Smash the right center field. Bellinger turns and watches it fly out of here. And the Phillies in 16 innings win it against Kike Hernandez. Bullpen did their job. It was a battle from both sides. Kike going in, trying to help the team save as many arms as he could, throwing strikes. Unfortunately, they came up short. Five hours, 55 minutes later, that's how it ends. Clue for the home run. 7 4. The Phillies have even the series at a game apiece. And in 11 hours and 15 minutes, they'll play the series finale. Fernando Omar Garcia Parr, Alana Rizzo, and the rest of our crew. Joe Davis saying so long from Philadelphia. Access Sportsnet Dodgers begins now.